On day one, I spawned in as Monkey D. Luffy, the rubber boy with a straw hat. Yo ho ho, I'm going to be the future king of the pirates. But it looks like I'm just a little kid for right now. At least my dreams are big. I gotta go find some good food to eat so I can grow up to be super strong. But there's nothing around this village but coconut trees. Whoa, a storm is rolling in. I better take cover. Is that a lightning bolt or a person? Avast ye straw hat Zozo. I be Captain O'Kilowatt, and you've had the misfortune of washing ashore of me island. Here you will be doomed to wander the many dangerous terrains in search of me greatest buried treasure. If ye succeed within 100 days, ye may keep what ye find. But if ye fail, ye will never be allowed to leave. Buried treasure? Well, Monkey D. Luffy is a pirate, so that treasure is as good as found. Ye had better hoped that you find it, or ye will never voyage on the sea again. Challenge accepted, you stormy scallywag. Good luck, Zozo. You'll need it. <laughs> Captain O'Kilowatt laughed evilly and rained down lightning on the village, so I ran for cover. He attacked several houses and even wiped out the villagers. Talk about no mercy. I have no idea how big this island is, but I'm going to scour every block of it until I find that buried treasure. The dangers ahead are completely unknown, but I will face them with a bravery suited for the future king of the pirates. On day two, I started to explore the nearby tropical forest. I have six hearts right now, so I need to stay in the least dangerous areas for right now. Who knows, maybe the buried treasure is in the easiest place to find it. That would be one crazy trick, wouldn't it? Oops, did I say this forest wasn't dangerous? What I meant to say was, it's filled with ghosts. Somehow, they kind of look familiar. Are you guys the ghosts of the villagers from back there? Yes, we are. Why couldn't you have been hit by that lightning instead of us? Just lucky, I guess? Not for long, Zozo, because we ghosts are going to haunt you. Oh no, I can't punch ghosts, and I don't have any weapons that can affect them. I gotta run to safety. Ah, get away from me! All of a sudden, I saw something swoop down from above. It picked me up and carried me away from the ghosts. When I got my bearings, I saw that I was at the top of a tall tree. There was a bird with a colorful beak in front of me. Wow. Were you the one who saved me? Yes, sir. I'm Stan. Stan the Toucan. And whenever there's someone in trouble in this tropical forest, I come to the rescue. That's cool, man. I'm Zozo. Want to join my pirate crew? Sure can, man. Every great pirate needs a bird sidekick, after all. I'm looking for the buried treasure of Captain O'Kilowatt. Do you know anyone who can help? I just might. Follow me. On day three, Stan the Toucan took me to a small workshop among the trees. Wait until you meet my friend, Titus the Armorer. He makes all sorts of useful items. Sweet! An armorer could be useful to have on my pirate crew. Yes. He could make me items and gear fit for a pirate king. I looked around and saw lots of really awesome armor. Did you make these all by yourself? Sorta of kinda, my good pirate. I do the crafting, but it takes brave adventurers like yourself to gather materials for me. I've had loot brought to me from all the terrain on this island, and I always take what I'm given and make it into something better. Neat! I've accepted Captain O'Kilowatt's challenge, so I'll be visiting all of the terrains myself. What can you tell me about them? Well, the main ones are the ancient ruins, the Cloud City, and the Misty Maze. Nobody who has looked for Captain O'Kilowatt's treasure has ever found it. But there's plenty of rare items I can make for you, if you bring me back stuff from each of them. So, you're saying I should visit each of those three terrains in the next 97 days, if I want to have a chance at winning? Pretty much. I set off for the terrains without a moment's delay. Luffy never passes up a chance to adventure. He also never travels without his crew, so I took Stan the Toucan with me. On days four to five, I was still in the tropical forest, so I made sure to gather wood from the trees. Once I had enough, I made my first set of tools. Yes. The wooden pickaxe will serve me well in gathering stone, but I won't be needing them for long, because I'm gonna use that stone to craft myself a set of stone tools. All right, time to build a base for the brand new Straw Hat Pirate Crew. I laid a bunch of wood blocks for the foundation and made sure to give lots of space for all the new friends I'm going to recruit. I get the captain's quarters, of course and Stan gets a birdhouse all to himself. I too can. Believe this base is wonderful, Captain Zozo. Oh, I get it. Two can. Well, two can play that game, Stan. Very funny. Well, leave the puns to me, won't ya? Gotta put a kitchen in here, too. I may not have a chef on my crew yet, but I am starting to get really hungry. While I was placing down the chest, I saw a strange item fall out of a tree. Say, isn't that the gum gum fruit? 
It is! Not only did it fill up my hunger bar, it also made me stretch out like a crazy rubber boy, and I grew to the size of regular Luffy. I've got nine hearts now! With that much health, I'll be able to last much longer in a fight with mobs now. I'm that much closer to becoming the king of the pirates! Yo ho ho! On days six to eight, I was on my way to the ancient ruins when I saw a flock of giant penguins. How adorable! Except, they didn't seem friendly at all because they were chasing someone down. And it looks like another human. And look, they're wearing an enormous chef's hat. Well, now I gotta help. I was so mad that I started smoking and my skin turned red with anger. Now my fists are stronger than my sword. Looks like the gum gum fruit I ate earlier gives my punches extra knockback. And I'm going to need it because these penguins totally outnumber me. I need to hit them quickly and then dodge. If they surround me, I'm dinner. With a gum gum powered punch, I took down the biggest one and the others retreated. March back home, penguins. Don't mess with the future king of the pirates. You okay, chef? Thanks to you I am, but how did you know I was a chef? Just a lucky guess, based on the fact that you are wearing this slightly oversized chef's hat and a chef's apron. You got me. I am a chef. Name's Skyler. I'm going to the ancient ruins to find a spice that can really cook my cooking up another notch. Wanna come with? I could really use a bodyguard. Sure. I'm headed there myself, looking for treasure. Personally, I think food is the greatest treasure of all. I like both treasure and food, for different reasons, of course. I can't eat gold. Or can I? You really shouldn't try to eat gold. It's not food. I'll take your word for it. You are the chef, after all. On days 9 to 10, I arrived at the ancient ruins, the first of the dangerous terrains that I must explore to complete the challenge. Before going any further, I decided to consult my loyal crew. So, Stan, Skylar, are you excited to explore the ruins? You know what, Captain Zozo. Excited? No. Eager to find the ingredients? Yes. But remember, this place is dangerous. What are you so worried about? Uh, it starts with that giant dinosaur right behind you. I thought these guys went extinct years ago, but it seems like I might be the extinct one if I don't get out of here. Ouch! That bite took away a lot of hearts. If only I knew how to use all of my different gum gum powers. Skylar has a weapon, but even together we're no match for this dinosaur. We've got to run away and fight another day. My crew and I ran away from the ancient ruins. Captain Okilowat wasn't kidding around when he said these trains were dangerous. And this one was only the first one. That was pretty brave back there, Zozo. Even if you didn't win. My hunger meter was getting low again, so I decided to go back home and grab a bite to eat. Which would be a lot easier now that I had a chef on my pirate crew. On days 11 to 12, I made sure that Skylar felt right at home as the head chef of the new Straw Hat crew. I built her a small house and made the food preparation area even bigger. To make sure we had plenty of ingredients, I also constructed an outdoor farm and a flower garden where we could grow plants and made pens where we could keep animals for meat. Of course, no pirate base would be complete without a flag to tell intruders who we are. The skull and crossbones mean business. Yar. We'll be heading back to the ancient ruins in a few days. Anything else I should know about that place? I heard that Captain Okilowat has members of his own pirate crew guarding each of the terrains. No way! He has a crew of his own? Yes, and you are going to become a part of it if you fail the challenge. At least, that's what's happened to all the other ones who tried it before. He forces people to join his crew? That's terrible! I can't let that happen to me! Just be careful, Zozo. The other pirates thought that way too, before he got them. Don't worry about it. I'm not like those other pirates. I'm gonna be king of the pirates. I can talk big, but these former challengers would all be strong opponents. I had to get in gear to face them. I decided to train my battle skills by fighting some cave centipedes underground. I gave their legs to Titus the Craftsman, and he was able to make me a special suit of armor that could climb walls. That'll come in handy later. On days 13 to 15, I was in the tropical woods when I realized I needed a new way to train. Stan, what should I do in order to get stronger? I need to become powerful enough to take on the dinosaur in the ancient ruins. Have you thought of going to one of the other dangerous terrains first? Maybe you'll be able to find something to help you there. That's a good point. Might I recommend the Cloud City? With your new climbing ability, you should be able to get up there through the mountains. I'll leave right away. I set off for the highest point on the map, climbing the walls with my centipede leggings until I reached the top. 
At the top of the mountain, it started to snow and visibility decreased. But wow, this place is amazing. There was a bridge connecting the Cloud City to the top of the mountain. Who knew there were materials that could be used to build buildings on top of clouds? I'm definitely gonna have to take some of these special blocks back with me. I better grab them fast because I can hear something inside the city. It looks like I've got company. An ice gas is flying towards me. So you must be Captain Zozo. I'm afraid you won't find any treasure here. Are you a member of the Okilowat crew? Yes, I am Ghastly Gust, the keeper of Cloud City. My wind powers will blow you away. I could feel Ghastly Gust attempt to launch me off of the mountain, but I didn't give in. This was a fight I had to win if I was going to complete the challenge. The Ghast had ice ball firing abilities, which trapped me in ice and slowed me down while also hurting me. With my gum gum abilities, I was able to stretch upwards and reach the gas. This way with my punches, I pummeled Ghastly Gust. When I took him down, he dropped some sort of weird key. I wonder what this opens. During the fight, it seemed like I had achieved a new level of strength. I decided to return to the base and placed one of the cloud blocks on the ground. Nothing happened. Oh, this thing is broken. I want a refund. I started jumping on it and I suddenly leveled up. Sure enough, I was faster, stronger, and could jump two blocks higher. Whoa, I've gone to second gear. In this most powerful form, I have 21 hearts. The training was a success. On days 16 to 19, I went to explore the Misty Maze. Since I had defeated a member of Captain O'Kilowatt's crew at Cloud City, I figured I could do the same here. True to its name, the Misty Maze was easy to get lost in. There were also skeletons everywhere, which is never a good sign. Speaking of signs, I found a mysterious note inside of the treasure chest along with another key. The note said, I have searched throughout every corner of the Misty Maze and there is no trace of Captain O'Kilowatt's buried treasure. I did find this key though, so whoever finds this treasure chest might have a chance to use it. What were these keys? It looked just like the one the Ghastly Gust dropped. Suddenly, I was attacked by the skeletons. They must have been guarding this treasure chest for Captain O'Kilowatt. Take this! You can't stop second gear! I found my way out of the maze with the key in hand. On days 20 to 22, I went to the beach on the edge of the island and fought some aggressive walruses. They weren't that tough now that I had gotten stronger, so I was able to gather their tusks as material. I mined some pearl blocks so I could trade it to the craftsmen in exchange for a better helmet and boots. Here you are, Zozo. New and improved armor for a pirate captain. Thanks, Titus. With stronger defenses, I went back to the ancient ruins. I had the feeling that I could find a third key there. The dinosaur last time was still roaming around, but I was geared up in more ways than one. I made short work of it. Wow, I really have gotten stronger. But not strong enough. Who are you? I am Anubis, the true guardian of the ancient ruins. I've been sent by Captain O'Kilowatt to defeat you here and now. He must really want to protect that buried treasure. Let me guess, it's here in the ruins? You wish, the treasure is in a place where you'll never reach. Was the buried treasure not in any of the terrains I'd been to so far? Just then, Anubis was struck by a lightning bolt. It was Captain O'Kilowatt. But why did he attack his own crewmate? You were a fool to give away clues so easily, Anubis. I have no room on my crew for fools. I was tempted to fight him then and there, but I knew I wasn't strong enough. So I just grabbed the key he dropped and ran away. On the way out of the ruins, I grabbed some spice from the ground. Just what Skylar was looking for. On days 23 to 26, I returned to the base with all three keys and also the spice for Skylar. Thanks, Zozo. Now I can complete my ultimate recipes. Let me know if you make anything with meat in it. You still have to catch some animals if you want a meal to happen. Well, you're the boss, Skylar. No, I am the chef. You're the boss. I thought I was the captain. With the previous dangerous terrains unguarded, I could now gather materials from all of them. Yes. But first, I went into the cave to mine some iron ore so I could upgrade my stone tools to iron ones. That way I could mine even deeper. Just because I know there isn't treasure doesn't mean I shouldn't dig. I decided to go back to the ancient ruins where there are stone brick blocks. These are perfect for building a sturdier wall. And now, I was even able to build floating buildings just like in Cloud City. Borrowing some of the designs I saw in the Misty Maze, I created a series of secret passages that could be used to mislead any enemy pirates who tried to sneak into the base. Skylar came out of the house to give us a leash to help with the animals. 
I could use it for capturing animals, and I made sure to gather up some of the tastiest creatures I could find. I buffed up my defense by building a wall out of the strong blocks I had found. Even though the base was coming along great, I still wondered what to do with the three keys that I had gotten from fighting Captain Okilowat's crew. I'd have to explore the island tomorrow and see if there was a way I could use them. On days 27 to 31, I traveled to a part of the island I had never been to before. It was a valley covered in smog. I wonder where it's all coming from. Even though it was hard to see, I could sense somebody sneaking up on me. Who's there? A pirate I had never seen before stepped out of the smog. Oh no, I've been found. Forgive me, Captain. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. Probably. Who are you? My name is Jovi the Ice Pirate. I'm a member of Okilowat's crew, but I can't stand by and let him imprison other pirates anymore. You should come back to base with me. It's much safer out there than hiding in this smoke cloud. Okay, I'll bring my special materials as well. They can only be found in this valley. Jovi went to mine some of the material, and I left the smog valley with him to return to the base. His special material, bronze dragon scales, were perfect for crafting an even stronger suit of armor. In the meantime, I added another tower to the base, and of course, more pirate flags. I also gave the outside of the wall a decorative wooden layer to make it look more like a pirate ship on land. Wow, that's perfect! Then Jovi came walking up to me and gave me a few samples of the bronze dragon scales. Now to go see Titus about that armor. I went to visit the craftsman and showed him the special materials. It seems like they brought back memories for him. These materials come from an island, far away from here. They're from a suit of armor I made back when I was undertaking the challenge. Wait, these are your materials? Yes, and the armor I built using them was one of my best. It belonged to a very dear crewmate who is sadly no longer here. I'm so sorry, Titus. Do you think we'd be able to rebuild the armor? We have to go back to that valley. The rest of it could still be down there. On days 32 to 35, Titus and I went to the Smog Valley and searched for the remaining pieces of the armor. The smog was so thick that it made it difficult to find anything, but it turned out that it was coming from some kind of huge factory. I noticed there was a door on the side of the factory with three keyholes. Those must be where the three keys go. Just then, we were ambushed by several giant trolls from the smog. There's so many, how can we stand a chance? Captain Zozo, you must unlock the door. I'll hold them off. But Titus, you're not strong enough. Who do you think I am, Captain? I am the craftsman, and these are my crafts. Just then, Titus equipped a really cool set of armor I'd never seen before. Now go, find out what's in there. I ran to the door and unlocked it, knowing that I may never see Titus again. His armor could survive the attacks of those giants, but not for long. Using the time Titus bought me, I put all three keys into the door and it began to open. Yes. Titus, come on, it's not too late. But it was. I turned and saw him fall to the ground after an extremely hard hit from the giants. Titus! I ran in and knocked down one of the giants, surprised at my own strength. But the next one hit me and took away most of my hearts. Captain, I've done all I can. Equip my armor. It's the only way. Okay. With Titus's enchanted armor, I fought back against the giants, fueled by the rage of what they did to my friend. When they were all defeated, the armor vanished into thin air. It was gone, and so was Titus. On days 36 to 39, I went through the large door that led to the factory. It was dark inside, but I soon found a light switch. I flipped it on and saw this place was up to something really sinister. Giants, like the ones outside, were being modified on a conveyor belt to become tricked out cyborgs. These must be Captain Okilowat's secret weapons. What is he planning to use them for? Meet the intruder alert. Uh-oh, an evil robot. Time to show no mercy. I hit the mechanical menace hard, and he was launched back. Yes. I was ready to go for round two when the robot seemed to stop fighting. Where am I? Where's the rest of my crew? Where's Titus? You knew Titus, Mr. Robot Man? Yes, we were members of the same pirate crew. I was captured here and turned into a cyborg. No way, that's terrible. I wondered if Okilowat would do the same to me and the rest of my friends if he captured me. Captain Okilowat's first mate did this to me with his powers. He's a man named Retro Gary who ate the Borgborg fruit. He has my real body. We have to get it back. Don't worry, we will for Titus. Thank you! It seems like I was able to snap Titus's old friend out of his cyborg mind control. 
Sometimes you gotta beat the mob inside to save yourself. On days 40 to 43, I built a memorial to Titus on the front of my base. Rest in peace, legendary craftsman. You did everything you could, Zozo. Thanks, Stan. This base is the safest place on the island now. We should let some of the good people from Cloud City live here. Good idea! I built some more floating dwellings inside the walls of the base. That way, the Cloud Villagers could live the way they were used to. We went to the Cloud City to invite the friendly Cloud Villagers to come live with us, and they agreed. There are so many people living at the base now, and all of them are counting on me to find the treasure. I can't let anybody down. I promise I'll become the king of the pirates. I believe you can do it, Zozo. Oh, hi, Jovi. How are you liking the base? I'm really grateful for the fact you took me in. I also thought I should tell you where you can find more of those materials I brought with me. You mean the pieces of Titus's armor? Yeah, there's more of it at my old hideout near the Smog Valley. It's in a badland where Captain O'Kilowatt tests his lightning powers. Sounds like I'll need to be careful, but it means getting the rest of those materials. I have to do it. For Titus! If I could complete that armor, I'd be able to face Captain O'Kilowatt and his secret weapons with my friend's ultimate work. I prepared for a journey to the Badlands. On days 44 to 49, I traveled to the Badlands. Lightning strikes had destroyed this place. There were no mobs anywhere, not even friendly ones. But there was Captain O'Kilowatt. He was practicing his lightning strikes, just like Jovi said. I see you there, Zozo. You're almost halfway out of days to complete my challenge. Are you sure you want to take me on now and cut it short? I'm only here for the rest of Titus's armor, O Kilowatt. I'll deal with you later. Oh, how brave. But I'm afraid you have misunderstood whose armor it is. I am the one who controls the island, so everything on it is mine. I have already gotten those materials for myself, and I'm going to use them for my secret weapons. You mean those cyborg giants? Yes. In fact, I have a prototype for you to play with right now. Enjoy, Straw Hat Zozo. Captain O'Kilowatt disappeared by summoning lightning on himself, and one of those giant cyborgs showed up, armed with special futuristic enchantments. I was not going to back down. The cyborg was big and had a huge reach, but I was quick and ran around to avoid its attacks. I launched a barrage of second gear punches at the cyborg, toppling it over. Some secret weapon you are, you belong in the recycle. But even that wasn't enough. The giant cyborg started chasing me towards a rock wall. On days 50 to 53, I was backed into a corner. The giant cyborg was still attacking me in a canyon. I climbed up the wall with my centipede leggings and dropped down to strike from above. Gum Gum Battle Axe! That one looked like it did some real damage. I had to keep going while I had the advantage. The mob was really strong, but I managed to knock it out with some more punches. Man, that was just one of those secret weapons. If more were unleashed, I don't know how I could win. I need to go home and eat some good food. I couldn't worry about that now though, because the giant had dropped some of Titus's armor pieces. When I touched them, I could see Titus and his crewmates in the past. I could see them exploring all of the Misty Maze, Cloud City, and the ancient ruins. All of them were wearing powerful suits of armor. In the ancient ruins, Titus even knocked down a tree with only one swing. That's how strong he was. It seemed like they almost defeated Captain O'Kilowatt back in the day. But Retro Gary helped out and turned Titus's friend into a robot. He destroyed the armor, and using a slingshot, he scattered the pieces of it throughout the Badlands in the valley. I had no idea Titus had been holding on to so much sadness. I'll make sure to complete the challenge so that nobody will ever have to face a defeat like that here again. On days 54 to 57, I made my way back to the factory to see if I could learn any more from Titus's robot crewmate. When I arrived on the inside and flipped the switch, I saw that a bunch of the giants had broken the conveyor belt and started to run free. This is probably bad for Captain O'Kilowatt in the long run, but it's bad for me right now. Those giants seemed really angry. Looks like you could use some help. Thanks, Robo Man. A friend of Titus is a friend of mine. Working together, we managed to defeat the ordinary giants. They dropped some kind of giant power-up, too. Huh? I suddenly grew bigger and became Luffy, third gear. Yo-ho-ho! -ho. It looked like I arrived at the factory just in time, too, because the conveyor belt was filled with the rest of the armor shards. Yes, I wore these once. When I was fully human, they belong to you now. Thanks, Robo Man. I promise to get your body back. 
When I finally made it back to the base, I went to Titus's chest and picked up the last armor pieces I needed. In the chest, I also found Titus's hammer. I went to the crafting table, and doing the best I could, I put the special armor back together. Somehow, it felt like Titus was watching over me, guiding me through the crafting process. I swung the hammer over the pieces on the crafting table, and the recipe was complete. I equipped the armor, and it looked like it would protect me really well. Almost a bit too much. The helmet provided so much protection, I could barely see out of it. Maybe for now I'll take the helmet off. I like being able to see where I'm going. Now that I had put on the restored suit of armor, I saw another vision of the past. Titus was digging into the ground at the tropical forest. What did this mean? Should I try to search for treasure there? On days 58 to 62, I stocked the animal pens and loaded up the farm with all the delicious ingredients I found while exploring. Onions, rutabaga, sweet berries, and beetroot. Now the meals for my crew would be the tastiest of all time. Skylar made a big meal for everyone at the base. We set up a large picnic table, and for once, things were peaceful around here. Bon appetit! Enjoy your feast! Oh boy! There's meat, veggie, all of the food groups! This is the best! After dinner, I decided to mine so that I could have powerful tools to match my new set of powerful armor. Since one of my moves is called Gum Gum Battle Axe, I figured along with the rest of the tools, I could craft a diamond battle axe to use for chopping wood and enemies alike. They'll never see this coming! I decided to have the inside of the base look like a pirate ship to match the outside, and lined all the inner walls with dark wood. I made sure to keep lots of chests around to fill with gold. Can't have a pirate base without any treasure of our own. When all of this is over, I'll have Okilowat's treasure in here too. On days 63 to 66, I went back to the tropical forest with Stan to see if maybe we could find the spot where Titus had been digging in the flashback. I don't see anything that looks like that place. What about you, Stan? Why are you asking me? I didn't see the flashback. Oh, yeah, right. You did say he was digging, so maybe you should try that hole over there. This looks a little deeper than the- Whoa! I'm falling in! I tumbled down into the shaft, leading deep down below the ground. If I hadn't caught myself with my wall climbing, that might have been it. But look at this place. There's a huge, empty chamber lit by torchlight. That's weird. It feels like there should be something in here. I dug around on the floor and found an unusual sarcophagus hidden among the rocks. It flung itself open, and out came a mummy! Back off, you gift-wrapped meanie! Thank you for setting me free. I've been trapped inside that box ever since my captain lost the silence challenge. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you were going to attack me. Say, what was your captain's name? His name was Captain Anubis. I was the most loyal member of his crew. Is he okay? No, I'm sorry. But I'm putting together a crew to stand up to Captain Okilowat. Do you want in? Of course. I don't like that guy at all. Also, this place was supposed to be where his treasure was, but he only put me here. Where do you think the rest of it is? I don't know, but first things first, you've got to help me get out of here. Oh, we can just climb out. Oh, right. Only I can do that. On days 67 to 70, I used the diamond tools I crafted to dig a tunnel leading back above ground. I broke open some of the blocks, and a devourer jumped into our path. He growled and hissed. Please tell me you're friendly too. It definitely wasn't, because it tried to devour me. I guess that's where the name comes from. If we don't defeat that devourer, we'll never get out of here. Don't worry, mummy. I'm your captain now, and I won't let anything bad happen to you. I meant those words too. All the other pirates who came to this island before me may have lost their way, but I made a vow that I'd keep everyone safe. That's how I'd become the king of the pirates, and no devourer would stop me. After I finished it off, the mummy and I continued our progress towards the surface. No other mobs showed up to attack us, so the rest of the journey was easy. Before I knew it, we were back near the top of the hole inside the tropical forest. Stan was waiting for us, and he seemed happy to see that I survived. Great to see you, Captain Zozo. But who's that mummy guy with you? I was once part of the crew of Anubis, but after seeing the bravery of Zozo, I've decided to join up with you guys. Well, the more the merrier. We all went back to the base together and had another delicious dinner to celebrate our crew getting even bigger. It was great to see so many people joining the team. I couldn't help but feel like we were all becoming one big happy family. On days 71 to 74, I was in the Badlands when I saw smog was everywhere again. I decided to take a look around. <coughs> it's kinda hard to breathe in here. But this looks just like the smog in the valley where I found that factory. That must be important. But what's even more important is that you... 
You find more of my adventures by searching ZOZO in the YouTube search bar. I walked for a long time before I saw exactly what I expected. Another factory for making those cyborg giants. I might have stolen back the armor pieces, but it seems like Captain Okilowat still hadn't given up on his plan. And there he is. I'll have to take him on. Foolish pirate. Have you forgotten that I train here? Taste me lightning. He started hitting me with lightning bolts. The armor was helping me avoid the worst of it, but he was too fast for me to get a lot of hits in. I realized I was still too weak to beat him, so I hightailed it out of there. I'll have to return to that factory later. But until then, the Badlands are off limits. That terrain is too dangerous to take lightly. On days 75 to 78, I was back at my base and doing some more work on the interior. Mostly by making the dining room bigger and more decorated. This is the place where everyone eats together, so it's gotta look nice. While I was thinking about all the friends that were already here to stay, I was surprised to get a visit from the robot. Zozo, I've come to help you unlock the full power of the armor you are wearing. This armor can become even more powerful? Do you remember back when Titus wore his own special armor? How it made him way stronger than usual while also granting him protection? Yeah, I saw both of you use that armor power in the flashback too. You can use it too. It was powered by the friendship between Titus and myself. That's our secret weapon. But how do I do it? I became friends with Titus while he was alive, but now he's gone. But I'm still here, Zozo, and I've come to give you what you are missing. I'm going to give you my friendship. Right. We fought together at that factory. We're definitely friends now. I accepted his friendship, and the power of the armor began to awaken. At the same time, so did my own power. I grew again, becoming Luffy fourth gear. Now I have 45 hearts. I'm almost strong enough to defeat Captain Okilawat now. I can feel it. On days 79 to 84, I decided to destroy the new factory with my fourth gear strength and supreme armor. For Titus, of course. And also because now I actually could probably do it. There are a bunch of those cyborg giants, but they were incomplete without the armor pieces that now made up my armor. You're no match for the power of friendship. My crew gives me strength. It was amazing to see how much stronger that I had become. These giants that were once going to be an unstoppable army were now completely unable to beat me. I feel like I can unleash even more strength. Gum Gum Super Jump. I grew massively, so I jumped on top of the factory, breaking through the roof. There were more robots inside the factory too. Look. He wears the captain's armor. Were these guys part of Titus's crew as well? Yes, we were captured and made into robotic servants by Retro Gary. Our real bodies are with him. Wow, I really need to do something about him. It seems like he's inconvenienced just about everyone. And how? Also, each of us kept a little bit more special material hidden away in case the captain ever came back for it. Excellent, I could use that to make some tools out of yes. it. Goodbye, diamond tools. Hello, special material tools. Now I've got a full set of armor and everything made of a material that gets stronger with friendship. I might as well call this stuff friend metal. On days 85 to 89, I got back to base, only to find that there were mechanized mobs attacking. Could there have been more cyborgs? No way, I thought I got rid of them all. Don't worry, everyone. The captain is here to help. These cyborgs were made from the devourers rather than the giants. It seems like Captain Okilowat had branched out and started making minions out of other things. They started retreating, but I'm gonna follow them back to the source. You won't get away that easily. I ran as fast as I could until I bumped into someone. It was another human, and they appeared to be carrying a bow and arrow. You can call me Sharpshooter. I came here from the Island of Snipers in search of buried treasure. I was challenged by a pirate captain who controlled lightning, but if I didn't- Sorry to interrupt, but I'll need to stop you right there. I'm actually on that quest right now. Oh, having any luck? Luck? Not exactly, but I'm doing pretty well at this point. Well, uh, let me know how it goes if you manage to get the treasure. Thanks? Personally, I think it has been more trouble than it's worth. The real treasure has been the friends I've made along the way. On days 90 to 94, I found that the cyborgs had gone back to a third factory. Man, how quickly can they build these things? This one was the biggest factory of all, and I could tell why. 
because Retro Gary was right there, ready to fight with me. Well, how do you do, Straw Hat Zozo? Your crew has become quite the source of trouble for my boss, so I'm gonna make sure that you're no longer a threat. You can't beat me, Gary. I've got the power of friendship on my side. Your power of friendship is no match for the power of my Borborg fruit. Cyborg devourers, combine with me and go into Super Mecha Retro Gary mode. Retro Gary combined with all of the minions to become one super powerful cyborg. This would be a tough fight for sure, but if I won, I'd be able to get all of Titus's crew's bodies back. I swung my special material axe at Retro Gary, and it seemed to do a little bit of damage. He can be hurt, which means that I can win. His attacks were really strong, but so was my armor. I stood my ground and continued to hit him over and over again. On days 95 to 97, Retro Gary still hadn't admitted defeat, but then again, neither had I. Borg Borg Blaster! Gum Gum Mallet! We traded attacks until I noticed some of the cyborg parts were starting to fall off of him. He was getting smaller with each attack. Yes. Soon he'd be back to normal, and that's when I could take him out. Captain O'Kilowatt and I are going to create an army of invincible cyborgs created from the world's strongest pirates. And both you and that armor are going to be our finest work yet. Me? Become a cyborg? You're dreaming, Gary. But here's a better dream. I'm gonna be king of the pirates. And with one final punch, I smashed his robotic body into pieces. Before his power faded away, Gary laughed maniacally. Apparently, he had one more secret left to reveal. Zozo, there is no treasure. Huh? It was just a story we came up with to lure pirates here to this island. The whole time, our plan was just to gather the raw material of our cyborg project. The other pirates were too weak, so they just became those low-level servants. If only I won against you, we'd finally have a perfect subject. With that, his power reached zero. Could it be true? Was there really no treasure? Either way, I'd have to take down Captain Okilowat to protect my friends, my crew, and the world from his evil plan. On day 98, I returned to the base and told everyone what happened. To my great delight, all the members of Titus's crew had gotten their bodies back when I defeated Retro Gary. <laughs> it seems our friendship with Titus was strong enough to grant you victory in this battle. It's not over yet. I've still got Okilowat to take care of. We'll be right behind you. I stopped by the house to visit Skylar, who had been preparing a welcome back meal for me ever since I left to go fight Gary. Here you go, Captain. This has all of the best ingredients. It was made as a sign of my loyalty to this crew and also our friendship. Thank you, Skylar. I don't know where I'd be without you, and I'd definitely be going hungry. Just then, Jovi and the Mummy approached. It seems you made good use of all that special material. It wasn't the material, Jovi. Captain Zozo's courage is what allowed him to defeat Retro Gary. If I'm being honest, I think it was a little bit of both of you guys. It was material! No, it was courage! Material! Courage! Okay, okay, guys, I get it. Just stop fighting. I was so thankful to see that everybody was safe and sound after the cyborg attack on the base. Well, almost everybody. There was still one important friend that I had to go see. On day 99, I headed back towards the destroyed village where everything had begun almost 100 days ago. That was the place where Captain Okilowat had challenged me, but now it would be the place that I would challenge him. But before that could happen, I remembered to walk through the tropical forest and say hello to Stan. Hey, Zozo, it's your toucan man, Stan. It's hard to believe how much we've been through to get here. You're telling me, friend. But treasure or no treasure, we're gonna see this through until the end. Somehow I knew you'd be the pirate to save us all. I knew it from the moment you set foot on this island. Stan and I walked together to the starting point and saw that Captain Okilowat hadn't shown up alone. Your time is almost up, Zozo. You may have defeated Gary, but I still have a few more giant cyborgs left. And once I juice them up with my full lightning power, they will be invincible. Yeah, right. That was Skylar's voice. She was here, and so was the rest of the crew. We've got this, Captain. We'll take on the giants while you settle things with Captain Okilowat. My crew sprung into action. I was so grateful and proud of all of them, but now I had to do my part. I was going to send Captain Okilowat flying once and for all. 
He flew away into the clouds. By grabbing onto Stan, the two of us flew upward into his last retreat. On day 100, I landed on the Cloud City Island and came face to face with Captain Okilowat. You shouldn't have lied about the treasure, or turned people into cyborgs, or destroyed Anubis, or all the other evil things you did. You're a really bad captain, you know that? Oh, spare me. We're pirates. We're supposed to be the bad guys. We steal things. We're selfish. And we don't let something like friendship stop us from reaching our goals. That's where you're wrong, Okilowat. I won't even call you a captain anymore. You're just the guy I need to beat before I become the king of the pirates. King of the pirates? Ha! Huh. Keep dreaming. I will. I'll never stop dreaming. I'll never give up. And I'll never let you hurt anyone else. We charged at each other and began our greatest battle yet. His lightning bolts were as potent as ever, but with my courage to guide me, I pushed through. I channeled my inner anger and suddenly grew in size. Then I landed a four-gear punch on him. He looked like that really hurt. Guess he wasn't as tough as I thought. He was just really good at dodging. He was at the edge of the cloud, and I punched him super hard, sending him flying to another smaller cloud. I used my gum gum super jump ability to get to him. One more attack like that, and you're done. You'll never hit me again. I'm going to destroy this cloud with me lightning powers. Feel the storm. Sure enough, the clouds began to fall away beneath me. You can't make me fall. Too bad I had nowhere else to jump. This left me as an open target, and Okilowat launched everything he had at me. This be the end, Zozo. No, it's the beginning of my dinner. I pulled out Skylar's welcome back meal and ate it. My health and hunger were instantly restored. Yummy. What? Good food from a good friend can weather any storm. You still can't hit me. Over here, Zappy. Stan flapped around near the bad guy's head. That was the only chance I needed. I jumped off my platform and smacked him in the face. Bye-bye, gum gum fist. That did it. Okilowat was sent flying into the distance, never to be seen again. As I fell back towards the ground, I smiled because I knew there was no way this was the end. My entire crew sat on a trampoline made of cloud blocks to catch me. I landed safely among all my friends. They were the real treasure, one that could never be buried. And as Pirate King, I treasure them always. On day one, I was laying in the sand. I stood up to find I was a person stranded on the beach of an ocean world. Whoa, this is a crazy place. I wonder who I am. It looks like maybe I'm a sailor who got stranded around here. But I didn't have time to think about who I was because a freaky looking drowned came crawling out of the ocean and shambling towards me across the beach. Stay back, I don't want any trouble. You, you survived the wreck. The king of the deep won't be happy. We can't deny him his catch. King of the deep? What are you talking about? I don't understand. Then let me help you understand. It'll all make more sense underneath the water. It's so inviting. The drown started walking towards me. It seemed like he wanted me to get drowned too. In my panic, I hit him and it knocked him back way further than I was expecting. Whoa, I must have knockback power on my attacks. Whoever I am, I must be someone strong. But the undead aren't that easy to beat. The drowned continued walking toward me. I really didn't want to risk getting dragged into the deep, so instead, I turned and ran off further down the beach. King of the deep, that guy sounds like trouble, especially if he's in the business of wrecking boats and drowning people. Didn't have long to mull over the details. As I was making my way across the beach, I was suddenly attacked by a vicious husk who looked intent on doing me harm. This time, rather than try to fight, I decided to just run away. I had too few hearts to risk losing them like this. Eventually, I found a shady patch where I could sit down and rest for the night. Hopefully, nothing would attack me there. King of the deep, I hope I don't run into that guy. On day two, I got up and got to work. If I was a sailor, I knew that I needed to be practical and no nonsense. It was time to get out there and make myself some tools. It didn't take me long to find a good clutch of palm trees on the beach, which I used my powerful punches to knock them down and turn the wood into a basic wooden pickaxe. I used my wooden pickaxe to mine enough stone for my first set of stone gear. A stone sword, axe, pickaxe, and shovel. Not a bad start. While exploring the beach, I came upon a stranded toolsmith. Somehow, he looked strangely familiar, so I approached him. Zozo, so good to see you. I was worried for a while that I was the only one who survived the wreck. Those tides were brutal. Oh, so this must have been one of my fellow sailors. 
Truth be told, I don't remember much of what happened. That's not surprising. I think I remember seeing you take a nasty bump to the head while we were all scrambling around. That's probably why your recollection is a bit fuzzy. Explains a lot. I'm starving too. Do you have any food? Sure. Take some of these rations. He gave me some food, which I quickly ate to replenish my hunger bar. Finally, things were looking up for me. Do you know anything about this King of the Deep guy? His goons are already giving me trouble, and I figure he's got something to do with the big crash. Your guess is as good as mine, pal, but if you do find him, give him one in the face for me. On day three, I went off in search of a decent place to build myself a basic base. I've always wanted a beachside property, I just never expected it to happen under such weird circumstances. I cut down some more palm trees and started building myself a nice wooden shack on the beach. It wasn't very defensible yet, but at this stage, I really only needed somewhere cozy to get myself out from under the beach's blistering hot sun. I took a break for a while and looked out over the vast ocean, the ocean that I somehow knew covered most of the planet. And somewhere out there in all that water, the king of the deep was waiting. I need to get off this planet as soon as possible, before things get dangerous. And as if on cue, a vicious vex emerged in the distance and came running at me. In sheer panic, I pulled out my stone sword and fought for my life. By the time the fight was done, only I remained. The battle with the Vex gave me enough XP to level up and get bigger and stronger. With 15 hearts and a new enchantment, the Frostwalker, which lets me walk on water by freezing it under my feet. At least I can handle myself. That's a plus in this crazy ocean world. For the rest of the day, I worked on my beachside shack. At least one part of this new situation could be nice and relaxing. From day four to day five, I continued gathering materials to expand my shack. There were thankfully a decent number of trees that I could cut down for wood. I'd just finished collecting a bunch of wood, when suddenly I saw a hauntingly familiar sight. It was the drowned I'd seen early on, walking right towards me. Oh no, not you again. Do you fear the water, Zozo? If you do, then I'm sorry to say, you may be on the wrong planet. You don't have to tell me that. The king awaits your attendance, Zozo. You shouldn't be afraid. Things are much better down where it's wetter. I'll take you to him. The drowned advanced towards me, but this time I was going to finish it. I pulled out my stone sword and attacked the drowned relentlessly, each one of my strikes doing bonus knockback damage. Soon enough, the drowned was defeated and destroyed. King of the Deep wants an audience with me? He better come and talk to me himself. And with that, I returned to my base. From day six to day eight, I managed to find a rare above water cave. It was exactly the kind of thing I needed to upgrade my gear in case I ended up encountering any bigger threats. Well, down in the cave, I decided to construct a furnace. It seemed like a wiser choice than having it out there in the open. The deeper I went into the cave, the darker and colder it got. That's when I came across a vein of iron ore in the ground and mined it. I returned to the furnace straight after and started smelting. Soon enough, I had an iron sword and an iron pickaxe on my hands. I also made myself some iron boots and an anvil. Now I can enchant my boots with frost walking. This is more like it. It feels good to finally be properly equipped. Couldn't have done it at a better time because a zombified piglin immediately rampaged through the cave towards me. Luckily, with my iron sword, it wasn't difficult to deal with the zombified piglin and move on, feeling more confident than ever. From day nine to day 10, I decided I needed some stone, so I ventured out across the Dead Sea, where there were huge stone structures. This will be the perfect place to mine some consequence-free stone for expanding my base without tearing up the whole beach. With my Frostwalker powers, I walked across the surface of the sea, and I used my iron pickaxe to start cutting stone from the structures. I collected a fair bit of stone when I turned to start heading back, but I suddenly got a terrible feeling. And the reason for that terrible feeling became obvious when I saw a terrifying water elemental rising from the water. Oh no, I think I know who you are. Yes, I'm glad that you recognize my energy, dear Zozo, as I recognize yours. I am his highness, the king of the deep. You almost came to stay with me, you know, but you rejected my gift. How very ungrateful of you. You're lying. You're a liar. I know that nothing good awaits me down there in the deep. I reject your offer. I ran forward and struck him with the sword. It did nothing. He wasn't harmed in the slightest. I struck again and again. Nothing. I knew that if I was there for a second longer, he might have dragged me down. I got into the boat as fast as I could and rowed until the king of the deep was gone and I was back on the safe dry shore. 
Yeah, I really don't like that guy. That much is now officially confirmed. I turned and saw something charging across the shore towards me. A huge mutated bee. For a second, I panicked. But before I could attack, it started to speak. Zozo, thank goodness. You survived the shipwreck. I'm sorry, who are you? You don't remember me? I'm First Mate Benson. We're good friends. You really must have hit your head hard during the wreck. Yeah, I've heard that much. Say, why don't you come back to my base with me? I need to get a better sense of what we're up against here. You've got a base? Sweet, let's go. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to my base with Benson. Seeing as my base wasn't that big yet, I decided I needed to make it bigger. I started from scratch and built a newer, bigger version of my home. I also built Benson a whole new room, which thankfully wasn't that difficult with all the resources I'd been collecting. Take a load off, Benson. I've got an important errand to run. Sure thing, Zozo. Let me know if you need anything. Oh, and take this bow and arrows. You might need it. Benson gave me a bow. Benson, I'm sure this will come in handy. I left back into that same mining cave I'd visited all that time before. I searched until I found another rich vein of iron ore. I mined enough and started heading back toward the cave furnace I'd built above, when I saw something frightening, a skeleton jackal wandering through the cave. I'm really lucky that Benson gave me that bow. Trying to stay as quiet as possible, I pulled out the bow and unleashed a volley onto the skeleton jackal. It was defeated before it even knew I was there. Phew, that was a close one. I then proceeded to the furnace and smelted myself some more protection in the form of an iron chest plate, leggings, and a helmet. It never hurts to have some extra defense when you're going against a strong foe. From day 13 to day 15, Benson and I made a campfire outside the base and decided to spend the night standing out on the beach, watching the ocean and discussing our plans for the future. This isn't going to be easy, Benson. I faced this king of the deep directly and nothing I did could even hurt him. How did he get us down here in the first place? Well, it was our ship, you see. Right, yeah, we were sailing and then it crashed. I know that much. No, Zozo, it wasn't that kind of ship. It was a spaceship. We were flying through the sector, then suddenly the spaceship got a strange signal from this planet. The captain got obsessed with it, insisted on taking us down here. But when we entered the atmosphere, the captain drove the ship straight down into the water like he was in a trance. I think the king of the deep, he took over his mind with the signal. He's the reason we're all here. Great, so he's even more powerful and dangerous than I'd thought. If he could take down our whole ship with his thoughts, then I don't know how we're gonna have any hope of beating him. I don't think we have a choice, Zozo. We've just gotta try, come what may. From day 16 to day 19, I woke up with the base feeling eerily quiet. I checked Benson's room, only to find that he wasn't there. But he left a note, it read, Zozo, I've headed out to the deep frozen ocean. I think there might be some valuable secrets there. And if there really were valuable secrets out there, I didn't want Benson to have to face them alone. I immediately went out and headed for the deep frozen ocean. Thankfully, because the water had already frozen over, I didn't even need my enchantment here. I just walked around looking for Benson, when suddenly an angry looking zombie spoiner jumped out. Well, 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 you finally arrived. I suppose you're looking for your buzzy friend. What did you do to him? I gave him a nice little nap under the ice. It's very refreshing down there. You monster, I'll break him out. There's no escape for you or him. This is what happens to those who defy the king of the deep. The zombie spoiner attacked me, but I had no time for his ridiculousness today. I ran in with my iron sword and destroyed him as quickly as I could. My true priority was saving Benson. As I walked, I saw something under the ice. It was Benson. I took my iron pickaxe and smashed some of the ice over the water. That's when Benson, thankfully alive, floated up and jumped out of the water. Zozo, you saved my life. How could I ever repay you? By staying alive and staying safe from now on. Head back to the base. I'm gonna look around for a while longer. Will do, Zozo. Benson left and I continued my search across the icy surface of the deep frozen ocean. During my search, I encountered a few husks that were easy enough to dispatch, but didn't find any useful information. Just when I was about to give up though, a strange figure emerged. It was the King Pig. You seek to defeat the King of the Deep. What? How did you? I know many things, my son. If you wish to defeat the King, you will need to obtain the Shield of the Deep. It is the only way. But how can I find? Some answers you must discover for yourself. Good luck on your quest, Zozo. Before I could say another word, the King Pig disappeared just as quickly and strangely as he'd arrived. 
From day 20 to day 22, I returned to my base, only to see a couple of husks wandering across the beach, looking for new victims. This beach has a major husk problem. I guess it's up to me to solve it. I used my bow to pick the husks off from a distance without the risk of engaging directly. I didn't want to risk losing any more hearts without a good reason. Once the husks were gone, I returned to my base and found First Mate Benson waiting for me. Zozo, Zozo, I have some good news for you. While you were gone, I've been working on a statue, something that I figured would motivate us to do our best, you know? You always said that motivation is extremely important. A statue, huh? I'll go take a look at it. Be right back. I went to investigate behind my base and saw that Benson had made some amazing progress on the statue already. It was truly a sight to see. I'm feeling more inspired already. Can you guess what the statue is gonna be yet? If you can, tell me down in the comments, and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want more Minecraft adventures from Zozo! From day 23 to day 26, I was hanging out at my base when suddenly a group of nasty looking drowned approached me. The rest of the group stood back while one stepped forward to talk to me. The king of the deep awaits your visit. He grows impatient, Zozo. Well, he should come up here and tell me that himself. Get away from my base. Why waste your time up on the land? Water is inevitable. The tide washes away all eventually. Why not just give up? Let the ocean current carry you down to your fate. Stop saying creepy stuff. I'm getting sick of it. I pulled out my bow and fired at the drowned, taking them out one by one. It took a little while, but luckily with my bow, I was able to attack them without getting too close. The last thing I wanted was for them to grab me and drag me down into the water. When all the drowned were defeated, I noticed that one of them dropped something. I went to get a closer look, and it was spears. Wow, these will be great for fighting if anyone else attacks me. Now I've got to test them out. To try out my new spears, I headed out to the Dead Sea in search of some mobs I could fight. I didn't find any, but I did practice throwing my spears anyway, and I got pretty good at it. While I was practicing, a fisherman came up to me. Are you Zozo? I sure am. Wait, you're not with the King of the Deep, are you? No, matey. I'm trying to hide from him. He wants me brought in as a prisoner. Do you know a safe place where I could stay? I sure do. I brought the fisherman back to my base with me, and I built him a room so he'd have a comfortable place to sleep. Thank you. What a lovely room. Quite cozy, but I will not complain. Having a safe space to live means a lot. No problem. Hope you'll enjoy your stay. From day 27 to day 31, I started trying to figure out where I could find the shield of the deep. Hey, fisherman, have you ever heard of the Shield of the Deep? Shield of the Deep? Oh, Zozo, my lad, I've heard tell of that very shield. Legend has it, the shield is found in the darkest, coldest part of the ocean, far from the sun's light or the eyes of man. So, like, the deep frozen ocean, then? Aye. Cool, I guess I'll go check it out. I traveled to the deep frozen ocean and looked for any signs of the shield. Brr, frozen is right. I tried to keep walking, but a piglin brute was blocking my path. Hey, excuse me, just trying to get by. If the shield you wish to see, then you will have to go through me. Well, okay, if you insist. I battled the piglin brute and managed to knock him down. I didn't destroy him, but I bought myself enough time to run by and get away. From day 32 to day 35, I kept wandering through the deep frozen ocean. As I explored, I spotted a sea serpent taking a nap. I didn't want to wake him up, but there wasn't anyone else to ask. Sorry to bother you, but do you know where I can find the Shield of the Deep? Eh? No, sorry. I don't know what. No, no, it's not a person. A shield. Like, you know, a shield? For fighting? Oh, oh, sh shield? No, still don't know it. That's okay. I'll keep looking. I left the sea serpent and carried on exploring the area. Looking for something, Zozo? The King of the Deep suddenly appeared. I tried to fight the King of the Deep, but he was still way too strong. If I try to keep this up, there's no way I'll make it. All I could do was turn and run until the King was out of sight. On the way, I ran into the sea serpent again. Was that the King of the Deep? We both need to get out of here. Follow me. With that, I ran off as the sea serpent slithered with me. Can I stay with you for a while though? Now that guy knows where I live, I'm scared he'll come back. Sure, come back to my base. From day 36 to day 39, the sea serpent and I headed back to the base. Once we were there, I built a room for him to stay in. After I finished, he came to talk to me. Wait a second, did you ask me something about the shield of the deep? I remember it now. I was pretty sleepy before, my memory wasn't great. But my grandma used to talk about some kind of special shield. 
I think it may be the one that you're looking for. There's a clue waiting in the frozen ocean. That's what Mima always used to say. Oh, that's great. Thank you. No problem. Oh, also, I saw that statue you've got going on. I added a bit to it. Can you take a look and make sure I got it right? I followed the sea serpent to the statue, and it was really starting to look great. You did an awesome job. From day 40 to day 43, I wanted to find a way to upgrade my weapons and armor. I decided to ask the fisherman for some advice. Any idea where I can find some upgrades? Zozo, me boy, you came to the right place. I've learned more about upgrades than there are fish in the sea. And thankfully for my job security, that's a lot. You can find some upgrade materials in yonder cave. Well, I don't know what a yonder is, but I do know of a cave. Thanks. I headed to the cave, but the entrance was blocked by a gorgon. I had to think fast to take it down, but with the use of my spears, I was able to defeat it. Inside the cave, I found diamonds. Tons of them. Perfect. That fisherman was right. I took the diamonds back to my base and used them to craft a diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword. Now I feel like I'm ready for just about anything. From day 44 to day 49, I took my new diamond weapons and headed to the frozen ocean. Let's see if I can find that clue Mima Sea Serpent was talking about. As I was walking, I was ambushed by a dread knight. He was really strong, but my diamond sword was stronger. With some careful dodging and a few swipes of my sword, I managed to beat him. But before I could get back to looking for clues, I heard a voice. Help! Someone help! I followed the sound and saw a black hippogriff surrounded by husks. Oh no, I'll save you. I rushed at the husks and slayed them one by one with my trusty diamond sword. Thank you, stranger. I thought I for sure was a goner. I'm Zozo. There, I'm not a stranger anymore. I'm Hilly. Hilly the Hippogriff. What brings you to these parts? I'm looking for the Shield of the Deep. Oh, goodness. Are you trying to take on the King of the Deep? Legend has it's the only shield that can protect against him. I am. I may have an idea of how to find it. There's a wise old ice dragon nearby. He can point us in the right direction. From day 50 to day 53, I followed Hilly to the domain of the ice dragon. As we traveled there, the piglin brute from before jumped in front of us. So, it appears we meet again. It's time for you to meet your end. Jeez, not this guy. But this time, with my new upgraded sword, I was strong enough to defeat him for good. Let's find that dragon. We explored for a while and then came to a house with an old ice dragon sitting out in front. Oh, visitors. Don't get many visitors these days. Hi, I'm Zozo. I heard you might know where I can find the Shield of the Deep. Oh, yes, the shield. Well, last I heard, it was being hoarded by a mutant hoglin. Really mean fellow. I'm not sure where he's keeping it, though. Mutant hoglin? That's more than I knew before. Thanks for your help. From day 54 to day 57, I returned to my base to figure out what to do next. When I got there, I saw my friends had been adding on to it while I was gone. They added some guard towers, some shelves, and some banners. This place looks great. The guard tower will keep us safe, the barrels add storage, and the banners look so cool. Thanks, everyone. No trouble at all. While I was checking everything out, the mutated bee came up to me. Zozo, can you help me destroy the Dread Scuttler? She's causing so much turmoil and trouble, and I'm scared she won't stop unless a hero stops her for good. I'm on it. The Dread Scuttler was pretty close by, so it didn't take me long to find her. Luckily for me, she didn't stand much of a chance against my spear. After I was done, I went back to the base. She won't bother anyone anymore. Thank you. I made this for you while you were gone. As a thanks. Wow, a diamond helmet. This will go great with my sword. Thank you. From day 58 to day 62, I was woken up by the mutated bean. Zozo, sorry to wake you, but come look. We've been working on the statue. I followed the bee to check out the progress everyone had made. This looks great. I can't wait to see it when it's done. While I was checking out the statue, I heard a noise behind me. I turned around, and there was a huge swarm of drowned surrounding my base. Oh no, get out of here. Not until you join us. Until you take your rightful place. No use fighting the tide, Zozo. No! I fought the drowned one by one, but there were so many of them. Before I could stop them, they knocked the fisherman to the ground. I defeated the rest of the drowned, but it was too late. The fisherman was gone. I won't let them get away with this. From day 63 to day 66, I returned to the frozen ocean. I'm more determined than ever. They hurt my friend. This is personal now. Well, even more personal than it was before. 
As I was exploring, I stumbled on a book. Hey, Book of Maritime History. I wonder what that means. I opened the book and started to read. It says the Shield of the Deep is hidden on the beach. That must be where the mutant Hoglin took it. As I was reading, a drown snuck up behind me and attacked me. But I was quick, and I got my sword ready and fought back. Pretty soon, he was toast, and I was ready to continue my search. From day 67 to day 70, I traveled to the beach to look for the Shield of the Deep. Oh, hey, I recognize this place. I've got a pretty good feeling about this. Who goes there? Uh-oh, I forgot about the mutant Hoglin. He was huge, and he looked really strong. But if I wanted to get that shield, I had no choice but to fight him. Any chance you'll let me go by and get that shield? Nope. Draw your sword and battle me. So I did. Jeez, he's really tough. I'm not sure I'll be able to beat him. I fell back until I could barely see the beast in the distance. To my surprise, a drowned ran up, but he didn't attack. Be not afraid. I'm not here for you this time, Zozo. I'm here to destroy this worthless hoglin. What? We both have an interest in retrieving the shield. I stood back out of the way as the drowned fought the mutant hoglin. Eventually, the hoglin picked up the shield and ran away as the drowned chased after him. Well, that was interesting. From day 71 to day 74, I headed to the mutant Hoglin's beach base to find that shield. But when I got there, I didn't see anything except for a note on the ground. Hey, what's this say? I picked it up. It says, foolish little Zozo, you can't outmaneuver the king of the deep. The shield is mine, and you will never get your filthy surface-dwelling hands on it. That's so rude. Not to mention, evil. I left the base. From day 75 to day 78, I headed back to my base to come up with the new plan. If I can't get the shield, what am I gonna do? When I got back to the base, I saw my friends waiting for me. Why am I glad to see you? The sea serpent approached me. We made some improvements. Check it out, we added an armory. And then Private Benson came over. And I made us a lowrider pool. That's a nice ride, really awesome. Thank you guys. But it wasn't just friendly faces, sadly. Come out and face me, Vandal. The mutant hoglin had followed me home. This time, I have to defeat him. I drew my sword and attacked. It was a pretty close call, but after a hard fight, I was finally able to beat him. I felt myself getting stronger. My hearts increased to 40, and I gained an ability. An ice blast that fired freezing blasts at my enemies. This is awesome. Hey, look at this. There was a note that the mutant hoglin dropped. It says Dead Sea. I'll go check it out. From day 79 to day 84, I traveled to the Dead Sea to look for anything important that I didn't notice the first time. Let's see what I can find. As I was looking around, I spotted an ice dragon. Hi, are you the same ice dragon I met before? Don't think so. I've never seen you. But is there any chance you're here looking for a way to defeat the King of the Deep? I am. Me too. Let's work together. I've heard he's got a base somewhere on the beach, but I need help finding a map to it. Come with me. Okay. I joined the new ice dragon in exploring, but I wasn't sure what we were looking for. I walked ahead of him when I suddenly heard a noise behind me. I turned and saw the ice dragon getting ready to attack me. Hey, what gives? I tricked you. I'm working with the king of the deep, you fool. Oh no. What he didn't count on was my new strength and my ice blast. Before long, I was able to defeat him. Can't believe that guy tried to trick me. But at least I have some more information. From day 85 to day 89, I decided to go back and visit the Black Hippogriff and see if he had any more helpful information for me. When I reached the frozen ocean, I headed to his house. Hi again. Zozo, welcome back. How's the quest to defeat the King of the Deep going? Well, I've been trying to get the Shield of the Deep, but he got to it first. Now I don't know what to do. Oh no. Well, I might have an idea for you on how you can get it back. The King of the Deep is a water elemental, so he's vulnerable to ice attacks. If you have any way to freeze him, that could slow him down long enough for you to steal the shield back. Wait, I have ice blasts. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Happy to help. Good luck, Zozo. From day 90 to day 94, I decided to gather some materials to upgrade my gear before I finally went to confront the King of the Deep. So I headed back to the cave to see what else I could find. Oh, hey, a chest. I wonder what's in here. I opened the chest and it contained a netherite ingot. Whoa, this stuff is pretty rare. 
I gathered up the netherite ingot and approached the smithing table next to the chest. I added the ingot to my diamond sword to create a netherite sword. This is amazing. If I can get my hands on the shield, I'm sure I can use this to win. From day 95 to day 97, I took my new sword back to my base. When I got there, my friends were waiting for me. Check out my new sword. That's great. We have something to show you too. The statue is almost done, but we wanted you to put in the last two pieces. I followed them to the almost finished statue. Private Benson gave me the last two gold blocks to put into place. When I was done, I took a step back and got a good look at it. Wow, it's King Neptune. This is amazing. Looking up at this statue of the real king of the ocean, not that bully of a water elemental, it reminds me what I'm fighting for. Thank you so much for building it. On day 98, I was preparing to head out and finally face the king of the deep for our final battle. As I was getting ready, the mutated bee came to talk to me. Zozo, I've been thinking, I want to come help you with this fight. You shouldn't have to face the king alone. Are you sure? It's going to be dangerous. What's life without a little danger? It'll be worth it. Thank you. On the way out of the base, I ran into the sea serpent again. I'll be here waiting for you guys when you get back. I know you'll win. You're a hero, Zozo. You're always having amazing adventures on this channel. And if you want to see more of Zozo's adventures in Minecraft, make sure to subscribe. Thank you. That really means a lot. On day 99, the mutated bee and I traveled to the King of the Deep's base on the beach. There were a lot of husks guarding the entrance, but the mutated bee kept them busy while I ran inside. There were more husks inside the base, but I was ready for them. I blasted them with my ice blast and fought them with my netherite sword. Gotta keep going and find that shield. It must be in here somewhere. On day 100, I continued fighting my way into the King of the Deep's base. I fought the husks on the walls, and after defeating them, my hearts increased to 80, and I gained the Energy Blast ability. Great, now all I need is that shield. You mean this shield? I turned around and saw the shield, but it was being guarded by a big, powerful drowned. Hand that shield over. Never! It belongs to the king now, as all things soon will. The oceans will rise and claim the land and all who walk upon its shores. Not if I have anything to say about it. I fired an energy blast at the drowned, then followed it with a blast from my ice blast and finished him off with my sword. Finally, the shield of the deep, I'm ready. I grabbed the shield and made my way down to the king's throne room. I opened the door and he was there waiting for me. Before I could attack, he started to transform. He grew bigger and stronger, evolving into a much more powerful version of himself. You don't scare me. No? Well, I should. Your defeat shall be swift. I fired my ice blast at the King of the Deep, freezing him long enough for me to attack with my sword. He knocked me back with a hard hit, but the shield protected me from the damage, as well as giving him a harming effect from the spikes. We continued fighting for a while. I used all the abilities I had. The energy blast, my shield, the ice blast. After a lot of fighting, I felt a surge of power and my hearts increased to 100 and I felt myself getting stronger. I knew I could beat him. I shot my ice blast, trapping him and with one more swipe of my sword, defeated him. Time to wave goodbye to the king of the deep. Get it? Wave like the ocean. On day one, I spawned in as a normal guy. No, wait, I'm a Navy SEAL. Awesome, I'm a trained warrior. But wait, what's this? I looked closer and saw I barely had any hearts and no armor. I was just a recruit. It looks like I haven't even been trusted with a weapon. Bummer. I guess I better take a look around and see what I can find. I took a peek around the deck and saw that the ship was pretty empty. This was a huge ship. It was kind of eerie. Nothing seemed to be going on. And as I looked around, I noticed there wasn't any land nearby either. What do I do now? Well, I'm a Navy SEAL. I should know how to swim, right? I walked over to the edge of the ship and jumped into the water. I swam around the anchor for a bit, but didn't see anything else around. Suddenly, I heard some movement in the water behind me, and I was attacked by a shark. Shifting timber, a great white. The shark bit at my ankles as I furiously swam toward the anchor. I grabbed onto the chain and clambered up as the shark snapped furiously below. Soon, I reached the top deck. Yikes, I guess I'll be staying out of the water for the time being. Sometime later, the sun was beginning to set. As I watched the sunset, there was suddenly a huge explosion. Whoa, what was that? I headed off in the direction of the blast. As I moved across the ship, I saw there was a huge hole blown in the top of the deck. As I got closer, I saw it was filled with zombies. There were zombies on this ship? Interesting. The zombies were determined to keep my friends, but I was actually well trained in handling the water, so I managed to fight them off. 
one of them after I dropped it on the floor and said it could be so. As the last zombie disappeared, I noticed it had dropped something. What's this? It looks like a flashlight. I can use this to navigate the inside of the ship. I settled myself down for the night and couldn't help but think, where did all the zombies come from? Did they used to be seals too? On day two, I felt like I had no choice but to start exploring the hole left behind from the explosion. I didn't love the idea of going into a hole that was full of zombies before, but what other choice did I have? It's pretty dark down here. I better use that flashlight. The flashlight let out a little bit of light and I set off into the darkness. As I walked the corridors, I couldn't help but get the feeling that something was watching me. What's that? I looked toward one of the doors. I could have sworn I saw something. This place is giving me the creeps. I kept moving through the maze of tunnels when I heard a squeaking up ahead. Okay, I definitely heard something that time. I got a little closer and was attacked by a bunch of rats. These were no ordinary rats though. Their flesh was rotted and their eyes glowed with a red hue. I quickly took them out. I've got a bad feeling about this. I continued down the hallway but could hear another sound up ahead. It sounded like some heavy thuds. Maybe some kind of machinery? I kept going when suddenly the source of the noise came to the light. It was a giant zombie. Uh-oh. The zombie hit me as I ran away. There's no way I could take this guy on. Just ahead, there were some open doors, and I quickly ran inside. As the zombie chased me, I hit the wall, smacking his head. This is the exact situation where a brain comes in handy. He let out a low groan and stumbled away from me. That's when I noticed he dropped something. I picked it up. Whoa, night vision goggles. These could not have come at a better time. I was getting really tired of being surprised in the dark. After I put them on, the whole ship was lit up. Nothing is going to sneak up on me now. On day three, the zombie threat had left, so I decided to do some more exploring. My new night vision goggles had made things much easier. As I ran through the hallways, I tried to open different doors, but everything was locked. This is going to be a tough 100 days if I can't get into anything. I continued through the maze until finally I found a door that was open. When I entered the room, I saw it was full of storage. Amazing! I hope I can find some good loot in here. I began rummaging through the boxes and saw that there were a ton of building supplies. I kept looking and soon came across a whole stash of food. I can't believe my luck. All this food looks good to eat, too. I stuffed my pockets full. Who knows if there was any other food aboard? I managed to find another container full as well. Soon I had gone through all of the boxes except for one big one. I jumped up and was surprised to see what was inside. Hey, who are you? Ah, you... You're not a zombie. No, and neither are you. Who are you? My name is Marcus, but my friends call me Switchblade. Well, they used to call me that, I suppose. Yeah, what's going on around here? All I know is there was some kind of zombie infection that spread through the whole ship. I got separated from another group of sailors who were headed for the wrecks. They might still be alive. We decided we'd go look for more survivors. But first, we needed to get to the flight deck and regroup. On days four to five, Switchblade and I had made it back to the top of the ship. Using the materials I had gathered in the supply room, I started putting together a simple base. Nowhere on the base was 100% safe, but at least here, we could be near the edge, and we knew zombies wouldn't be able to attack during the day. Once the tent was set up, I got to work on the inside, filling it with all of the crafting tables we need, along with some beds for us to sleep in for the night. As a final safety measure, I put up a fence across the ship, so that even at night, zombies wouldn't be able to sneak up on us. When it was all done, Switchblade came and took a look. Nice work, Zozo. This base is top notch. With the base complete, I headed over to the crafting table and made a set of stone tools. I couldn't get through any of the doors, but maybe with some tools I could just break through the walls. With my new set of stone tools, I headed over to the ship wall and tried swinging my pickaxe. Huh, not even a dent. I tried a few surfaces, but no luck. At the very least, I now had some tools in case of an emergency. That night, I headed outside with my goggles on to see if the zombies would give us any issues. Looks like they're keeping their distance. This should be a safe place for us to work out of. On day six to eight, Switchblade met me inside the tent to discuss our next move. Well, it's not the most detailed map, but take a look at this. Switchblade threw the map up on the wall. He was right. It's a good thing he chose the military and not art school. This should give you an idea of how to get to the bunk area, where I believe the other sailors had headed. There's no guarantee anyone is there, but more sailors is an invaluable asset at this juncture. I agreed, and so I headed out of the tent and into the hole. Using Switchblade's map as a guide, I made my way down a corridor I didn't notice before. By following that, I came across a staircase that took me even deeper into the ship. I can't help but have a sinking feeling about this. I reached the bottom and started moving ahead through the darkness. I could hear some shuffling up ahead. There was a small group of cave spiders. Spiders, 12 o'clock. I charged forward with my sword in hand and started hacking away. The spiders managed to land a few hits, but it wasn't an enemy to handle. Soon enough, the small group was all destroyed. Time to get to those sailors. I pushed just a little farther ahead and came across the door. I tried to push it open, but it didn't budge. I had no idea if zombies were nearby, so I gave the door a small tap. Psst. Hey, is anyone in there? No response. Maybe I was being too quiet. I raised my voice a little more. Can anyone hear me? Do you copy? Is there anyone inside? This time I thought I heard a little bit of movement inside, but nobody was responding. Looks like I've only got one more option. I started banging on the door. Hey, wake up! Your buddy Switchblade sent me! The door flew open. Man, have you lost your mind? Don't you know there's zombies around? 
I was trying to be quiet, but no one was answering. We thought you were a zombie trying to sniff us out. You wouldn't have been the first, you know. I get that. I'm sorry. So, who are you guys? We're from Switchblade's crew. I'm actually the first mate on the ship. I suppose I'm the acting commander of the ship as well. You're the acting commander. That means something must have happened to the captain. I'm sorry for your loss. I am too, although I don't know if I would call it a loss. The captain is technically still alive. You mean he's a zombie? Yeah. Before this all happened, we spotted a mysterious island offshore. The captain went to explore and returned with this mysterious artifact. That very night, a zombie outbreak occurred and we ran down here. That's awful. Well, maybe we can figure out how to stop everything. Do you have any more information about the captain that can help? Yes. Well, he is a zombie. He's not quite as far gone as the rest of them. In fact, I think the secret... But before he could see that secret, the zombie appeared over his shoulder and killed him. He the zombie horde came pouring into the room and had done their best to fight the monster at the door. He shouted in fear as the zombies kept trying to rip us to pieces. Luckily, the captain was pretty good at fighting these guys. I was able to take them all out. We better hurry and get out of here, guys. There could be more on the way. We took off running and headed back up towards the base. On days 9 through 10, I emerged from the boat with the two sailors. We were all still processing the loss of the first mate, but we had to focus on our own safety. I wonder what the first mate was going to tell us. We soon arrived back at the base, and I got right to work building them a tent of their own. They had mentioned having a background in medicine, so I decided to set them up in their own medical tent. We didn't have too much in medical supplies yet, but seeing the base double in size was giving me hope. We all felt like we could use a little bit of hope, so I offered to make a statue that could serve as inspiration to us all. There was a certain Navy SEAL I had read about that I found particularly inspiring. The interesting thing about him was that he wasn't from the past, he was actually from the future. After a bit, I was running low on supplies, so I stopped for the time being. Any guesses on who you think I'm building? Let me know in the comments. On days 11 to 13, I woke to a strange noise. Is that barking? Something doesn't sound quite right about it. Down in the water, I could see a seal, and it was being chased by the shark from earlier. Can someone give me a hand down here? A seal can talk. That's interesting. Let's see if I've got anything that can help. I ran back to my tent and opened up one of the crates. Inside was a collection of rocks. I grabbed a handful and ran back over to the edge of the boat. Hey shark, suck on this. I started chucking rocks down into the water and managed to hit the shark a few times. He kept chasing the seal around, but I could tell it was bothering him. Eventually, it was enough to let the seal get away. Hey, climb on up! The seal swam up to the anchor and ascended the chain. When he reached the top, he plopped down in exhaustion. Oh, thank you! You really saved my life! No problem. You gotta look after my fellow seals, after all. Oh, because you're also a seal. I get it. Why was that shark chasing you, anyway? I have no idea. He's hungry, I guess. But have you seen what's going on under your ship? There's something down there that I think would blow your mind. What do you mean? There's this massive rocky column coming out of the earth and into your ship. I've never seen anything like it before. You should go down there and take a look. I'd love to, but I don't think I can just do that. I'm gonna need some scuba equipment to get down there. Suit yourself. I headed over to the other sailors and let them know what I had learned. They were just as confused as I was, but let me know there was an equipment room back down on the ship that should have the scuba gear I'm looking for. They also gave me a stash of iron they had collected. Thanks guys, this will be helpful for sure. I headed over to the crafting table and put together a new set of iron armor. I also took some time to make an iron sword. If I was heading back into the boat, I needed all the help I could get. On days 14 to 15, I took my new gear and headed back down into the ship. I always had a bit in my stomach when I went down here, but there's no way I'd be able to survive out here without searching for answers. After after a little bit of exploring, I could hear something up ahead. More spiders! Disgusting! I leapt into battle with my new iron sword and started hacking and slashing. With each kill, the spider shriveled and faded away. As I cut my way through the spiders, I noticed there was a group of zombie rats watching too. Come and get some! The spiders had all been destroyed, but I guess the rats were feeling a little intimidated. They all ran away in fear. Yeah, that's what I thought. I pushed forward through the dark tunnels and eventually reached the dive room. Awesome! Now I can snag some scuba gear. I opened the door and saw the giant mutant zombie from earlier was inside. What the heck? How did you get there? The zombie wasted no time attacking me and broke the window. though. This time, I was prepared. How do you like me now? I bobbed and weaved as he tried to hit me with shockwaves and pounded me. I was doing well, but this guy packed a punch. I still only had five hearts. My new gear and experience was still too much for him, though. He came out victorious. Not so tough anymore, are you? With the adrenaline still pumping through my veins, I felt an extra surge of energy and was promoted to the rank of seaman. And check it out! Now I have ten hearts! Feeling stronger than ever, I took a look around the room. Hanging up was a full scuba suit, so I grabbed each piece and placed it in my inventory. Then I saw something laying in the corner of the room. Awesome! A harpoon gun! Now I can protect myself from any underwater threats I come across. I checked the nearby crates and saw they were full of harpoons. I gathered them all up and headed back up to the flight deck. 
On day 16 to 19, I had arrived back on the flight deck, and I noticed that the seal was still there. Hey, how's it going? To be honest, not great. That shark is still down there, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get away from him. I was hoping I could stay here for a bit. Yeah, that should be fine. But you do know the ship is infested with zombies, right? I'll take zombies over sharks any day. <laughs> okay, but what about water? Don't you need it? At least a little bit? I do. I was hoping you might have an idea about that. You know what? I think I do. Hang tight and let me get something set up. I grabbed some building supplies and started working on a tent for the seal to stay in. Once I got the outside set up, I got to work making him a tank to live in. This way he'll have some water he can easily access, even though he's not in the ocean. Once that was finished, I headed over to do some more work on the statue. I managed to get a decent amount done, but still had a long way to go. There was certainly a good shape taking place, but can you tell what it is yet? On days 20 to 22, I headed into my tent to get geared up. I grabbed my scuba gear off the armor rack and put it on. Then I opened up the nearby crate and took out my harpoon gun and harpoons. I know that shark is still out there, so I have to take him down before I can even start looking at that column the seal mentioned. But before I jump in, could you help me out? Over 40,000 of you have joined the Zozo Navy, and we'd love to have even more join up with us for even bigger adventures. So hit the subscribe button and let's do this. I put on my scuba helmet and got ready to jump over the edge of the boat. Here goes nothing. On days 23 to 26, I got a running start and leapt off the side of the boat, landing on the side below. All right, let's find this shark and take him out. With my harpoon gun in hand, I swam out from the boat, scanning the scenery for a glimpse of the aquatic monster. I swam and swam, but nothing. Hmm, maybe the shark left after all. I didn't see any signs from anyone. Just when I was starting to feel safe, the Ouch! You're gonna pay for that! I took aim with my harpoon gun and fired! I was able to hit him, but he showed no signs of slowing his attack. Oh man, I'm really starting to feel out of my element down here. The fight was intense. I kept firing my harpoons as the shark kept trying to take chunks out of my arm. Our fight had moved under the boat, and suddenly the shark got a hold of me and started pulling me deeper and deeper. If I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. As the shark pulled me deeper and deeper, I hit him with harpoons. He managed to get several hits in, but suddenly I heard a hissing noise as one of his teeth punctured the oxygen flow in my helmet. I'm too deep to go without oxygen. What am I going to do? I had an idea. If I could time this right, I could ignite the oxygen coming from my helmet and use it like a grenade. Catch this! Threw my helmet and it exploded on impact, killing the shark. There was no time to celebrate though. I couldn't hold my breath forever. I looked around and saw a cave nearby. Maybe there's an air pocket. I swam as my oxygen levels continued to drop, bursting through the wall of water on the dry ground. Whew, that was way too close. But what am I supposed to do now? On days 27 to 29, I decided my only option was to head deeper into the cave and see what I could find. What I saw next was totally unexpected. Is that... Octopus? Sitting at the bottom of the cave was a giant octopus. As I got closer, he started talking to me. Hello there. I can't help but think you're a little lost. That's one way of putting it. Do you know a way back up to the surface? There's only one way, which is back the way you came. But breathing is the problem, right? All you need is the scuba mask I have. It will give you all the oxygen you need. Great. So, can I have it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Are you going to give it to me? I will. Nope. I should have just said that in the first place. What can I do to help? My wife was kidnapped by a horrible giant squid, and I need someone to rescue her. He's hiding out in a sunken pirate ship. I need you to take him out. Don't ask him any questions. Okay, I can probably manage that, except for one big problem. What's that? I can't breathe underwater. Oh, yes, yes, that's simple. As you swim toward the ship, you'll see some clams lying along the seafloor. Give them a knock with your fist, and they'll let out oxygen bubbles, and now need to breathe. I really hope you're right about that. I started making my way out of the cave, but stopped to mine all the various ores. That way I'd have more supplies for later. Once I had collected as much as I could, I left the cave and started swimming in the direction of the pirate ship. As my oxygen levels started to run low, I swam up to a clam and gave it a tap. Sure enough, the bubbles came out. Okay, it looks like he was right. They didn't teach me that one in SEAL training. As I was starting to swim away though, I felt something brush along my back. It was a school of piranhas. You put your teethy grins away from me. I was so distracted by the fight, I nearly ran out of oxygen and drowned. Luckily, I was able to hit the clam before it was too late. At long last, I managed to fillet the rest of the fish. Now it's exhausting and it's getting late. I should try and find a cave to rest in. I swam a little further and soon saw a cave along the seafloor. I swam in and saw it had a nice pocket of water. The cave was also full of resources, so I made sure to grab those before settling in for the night. On days 30 to 35, I left the cave and continued to search for the pirate ship, grabbing oxygen from the clams along the way. I soon found myself in a colorful coral reef, and eventually saw the pirate ship lodged in the middle. I swam up to the ship and started to take a look around. As far as I could tell, the ship looked deserted. Might as well check the chest for anything good. I opened the crates and found some gold and gunpowder. One of the crates even had an enchanted infinity book inside. Just then, I saw something moving on the other side of the boat. It was the giant squid! Get away from my ship! 
Oh, someone thinks they're a real tough guy. I swam over to the squid as he hit me with his tentacles, knocking me back. Why'd you kidnap an innocent octopus's wife? The giant squid stopped fighting. Kidnap? Innocent? Wait a second, I think you have the wrong idea. The octopus told me you would try to trick me. Nothing you say can change my mind. Just then, the octopus's wife popped up. Wait, hear us out. My ex-husband was lying to you. Okay, this was definitely a plot twist. What was going on? First things first, though, I had nearly run out of oxygen. I quickly punched a clam as the octopus's wife began to escape. My ex-husband was so evil. He was mean and killed humans for fun. That's where he got that scuba mask he has. My squid friend here helped me to escape. Friend? I mean, yeah, we're friends, but Holly, I thought it was more than that. Not now, Jerry. Look, let's all head back. I think together we can teach Chad a lesson. His name is Chad? Say no more. Let's go. Without delay, we all took off for Chad's cave. We soon arrived after a bit of swimming. I'll go in there and draw him out, but you guys can do your thing. I made my way back inside the cave and talked to Chad. Good news, your wife is just outside and is waiting for you. Oh, goody. Well done, well done. I sure hope that nasty secret. As we swam out of the cave, Jerry was waiting for me. You've messed with her for the last time. Oh, you're still alive? You hurt me. I watched as Jerry smacked the octopus and swam away. The guy was squirting ink all over the place. How embarrassing. As those two swam off, Molly headed inside the cave and grabbed the scuba mask out of her chest. Here you go, Zozo. I think you burned it. She tossed out the mask, which I quickly grabbed and put on. Just in time, too. I was nearly out of oxygen. Thanks, Molly. You guys take it easy down here. On days 36 to 40, I was planning on heading up to the surface, but took a moment to check out the column attached to the ship. This column doesn't look like something the ship ran into. It looks like the column grew and ran into the ship. Something fishy was definitely going on, but I needed to get back up to the ship to talk to the crew. As I climbed aboard, I saw the base was under attack. The sun hasn't set yet. How are zombies attacking now? As I got closer, though, I saw there weren't zombies at all. They were some kind of aquatic humanoid monsters. They were much stronger than the zombies. Look, you guys stink. But more importantly, where did you come from? I was able to keep myself from taking too much damage, and noticed that one of them had dropped satellite. But at long last, the monsters were all defeated. I went and took a closer look at the fence, and saw they had broken right through. Looks like we've got some work to do. But before then, I had to get out of the scuba suit. I hung the suit back up and stashed the loot I had found at the base. The next day had rolled around, and I decided to upgrade my gear, just in case the monsters tried to attack again. I quickly smelted down all the iron I collected, then used that iron to make an anvil. I placed the anvil down, then used the infinity enchantment I had found to enchant my harpoon gun. Now I'll have unlimited ammo. Next up, I had an idea for what I wanted to make with the sapphires the monsters had dropped. I grabbed a hammer and used it to shape the sapphires into a blade. With my gear upgraded, I headed over to talk to Switchblade about how things had been going and fill him in on what I had discovered. It's been rough, to be honest. We had been fighting off wave after wave of monsters. It's a good thing you showed up when you did, because we didn't think we were going to make it. I'm just glad everyone is okay. So what are you thinking for our next move? Switchblade led me outside. Well, as you can see, they were able to break right through our wooden fence. The best bet is to upgrade the wall. We'll do well to get a proper HQ set up. Sounds like a plan. Let's gather some supplies and get right to it. On days 41 to 43, we had finished gathering the supplies we needed, so I started by tearing down one of the old planes on the deck. The new fence was going to be a bit bigger, so we'd need a little bit of extra room. The plane was soon cleared, and I got to work building a metal security fence across the deck. In addition to the fence, I also put up a guard tower so we could have some leverage on any attacking monsters. They would have a heck of a time getting through this. After I finished the fence, I got to work on the headquarters. Having a sturdy building to store and plan from was going to be much more reliable than something a horde of zombies could tear through in a matter of minutes. Once the exterior was complete, I went ahead and filled the inside with everything we were going to need. I decided to get to work on the next part of the statue. I only had a little bit of materials on hand, so I just did a little bit of work on the one side. Just as I was finishing up, I heard a loud crash outside. What in the world was that? I ran outside and took a look over the edge of the ship. A submarine had crashed into the side of the boat. Where did this come from? As I was looking down, the sub's hatch opened and a dazed officer stuck their head out. Hello down there. Can we help you? She looked around confused. I think so. She didn't seem like she was all right, so I quickly jumped up inside the boat, swam over to the sub, and climbed aboard next to her. Where did you come from? Sorry, I'm a little frazzled. My name is Alice. I've been tracking this ship for weeks without rest. Funny enough, it wasn't until I fell asleep that I finally found it. Well, here, let's get on board and we can chat more. We jumped into the water and climbed up the boat. Once we were on the deck, we continued our conversation. So why were you tracking the ship? Some time ago, I was searching for an ancient artifact. The same one that the captain of the ship came into contact with recently. He beat me to it, but I don't think he understood what it was. I've been desperately trying to find this ship. 
Not because the artifact is valuable, which it is, but because we need to destroy it, and I'm the only one who knows how to do that. Yeah, you're telling me. That artifact seems to be the source of all the problems here. We're more than happy to try and destroy it. Just then, the seal flopped over. Zozo, something about this all seems off to me. What do you know? You're just a seal. I'm a trained submariner. Yeah, a trained submariner who just crashed their sub. Okay, okay, you two. Calm down. Look, we know there's something weird going on, and this could be a shot to fix it, or at least end it. What do we know about the artifact? Well, the captain probably has it near him, up in the control tower, so we should focus on getting to that. Okay, sounds good. The doors are all locked, but maybe the other sailors know a way around that. I headed over to talk to the sailors. There was good news. There was actually a master key to the entire ship. The bad news, though, was that the key was most likely in the armory, deep in the belly of the boat. Well, I figured I'd have to go back in there at some point. We'll get this done. On days 44 to 49, I headed back down into the ship as I navigated the curving passageway. I heard the scuffling of my head. Here we go. The zombies came straight around the corner, but they were no match for my new sapphire sword. I was able to break up the overpower of these guys, but how would it hold up against a group of those monsters? With the zombies out of the way, I headed deeper still into the ship. Soon I found myself in a room full of different internal mechanisms. I could hear something in the room ahead. It sounds like more zombies, but something is different. I poked my head through the doorway and could see one of those monsters leading the zombies around. Is he commanding them? I very quickly found the answer to that question because the monster outside of me let out of ground and all the zombies charged. Don't listen to him! He said he didn't help me! I tried to get the monster, but the zombies moved almost like they were protected. I had no choice to fight them off first. Get back up, you heads! Soon enough, the zombies were all destroyed and I was able to engage the monster. He was strong, but he couldn't do much all by himself. Soon enough, he was taken down too. A familiar rush of adrenaline came pouring in, and I could feel myself getting stronger. I suddenly gained four more hearts, and was promoted to a petty officer. More health and strength. Nice! On days 50 to 53, I kept making my way to the armory. Soon, I could see the door, but outside of it was another one of those monsters. It was walking down the hallway behind a larger group. What are these guys doing? I should follow them and see where they're headed. I should probably give these guys a name too. I'll call them blobs. These blobs certainly seem to have some level of intelligence. They weren't like the zombies who would mindlessly attack anyone nearby. The blobs seemed to be up to something. I followed them through the winding hallways and even had some close calls. I think they may have suspected they were being followed, as I had to duck into a side room to avoid being detected at times. Feels like we've gone down several floors. We've got to be close to the bottom of the ship at this point. Soon enough, I followed them into a room and couldn't believe what I was seeing. There were several blobs roaming around, but more concerning were the cages hanging from the ceiling. There's sailors in some of those cages. Something is turning them into zombies. That something must have had to do with what I saw on the ground. There was a massive hole with pink goo dripping into it. This must be where the column meets the ship. So the column must be hollow. It's a tunnel of some sort. Before I could get any closer though, one of the blobs noticed me and attacked. I wanted to fight him off. I could see I had all of their attention now. I don't know what's going on here, but I don't want to end up in one of those cages. I booked it out of there. On days 54 to 57, I was running for my life. The blobs were hot on my tail, but I was starting to put distance between us. I'm not going to be your next experiment. I was a pretty speedy guy and was able to get away. Oh, what was I doing again? Oh yeah, the armory. Soon enough, I found my way back to the armory and headed inside. Oh man, why did they tell me about this place before? The armory was full of all kinds of good stuff. I walked up to the center table and took a look at everything. Glittering in the middle of the table was a brand new shotgun. Oh ho ho, now we're backing. The blob won't want to meet me around a dark corner. The next thing I picked up was the master key. Now I'll be able to get into any part of the ship. I checked out some of the crates and managed to scrounge up some ammo for the shotgun. Then I took a look at the armor hanging up. Is this special ops gear? It is! I pulled it off the rack and put it on. With everything equipped, I saw that my armor was maxed out. Oh yeah, now I'm ready for a fight. After I had grabbed everything else I could, I headed out back to the flight deck. On days 58 to 62, I arrived back on the flight deck and went to talk to the SEAL about everything I had seen. Hey bud, you'll never guess what I found down there. Oh no, don't tell me. More monsters? Even worse, that column you saw is a tunnel of some kind, and they're turning the sailors into zombies. Just then, Alice walked up. They're probably just summoning an ancient god. Ancient god? What? Oh yes, the ancient artifact is like a beacon that calls to the disciples of the god Aquino to begin preparing for his arrival. You can't be serious. Oh, I am. By harvesting the souls of men, they give him the power to travel from his prison below, up and into our world. It's incredible. Incredible? Don't you mean horrible? Um, yes, it's horrible. Um, by incredible, I just mean, like, insane. How do you know all of this, anyway? Oh, uh, I read about it in a book. I'm a very learned explorer. Right. 
I was going to have to keep my eye on Alice, but in the meantime, I thought it'd be best to get to work on the statue. If we couldn't stop Akuno from coming to this world, at least there'd be an intimidating statue he'll have to look at. Yeah, I'm not feeling too good about it at all, but at least the next phase of the statue was complete. On day 63 to 66, I decided to dive into the water to find out more supplies for the statue. I swam deep and saw just what I was looking for. Perfect, I'll just collect these and be on my way. I took out my pickaxe and quickly mined up everything I was going to need. It was hard work mining underwater, but having a mask that let me breathe made everything much easier. Speaking of which, I should check in on Molly and Jerry. Maybe they noticed anything with the tunnel. As I swam near the cave, Jerry came swimming over and Molly came out to greet me. Hey guys, I was just checking in. Have you noticed anything weird about the tunnel over there? We were hoping you'd come by. We've been noticing some strange vibrations coming out of it. What's going on? Well, it's bad news, unfortunately. Apparently, there's an ancient god ritual in the works. There's an ancient artifact that we need to destroy to stop it, but I have no idea what I'm going to be up against. I think I know something that could help, actually. The pirate ship we were living in before had remnants of something that looked very similar to the tunnel here. I think it may have had something to do with why the boat sunk. Oh, no way! Yeah, and there were some books buried in the crates. I can't read, but maybe they will contain some helpful information. That's an awesome tip! I'll go take a look. I took off in the direction of the ship and arrived soon after. Before I head in there though, have you hit the sub button yet? The more subs we have, the stronger our navy will be. On day 67 to 70, I swam down into the pirate ship and decided to take a look around. I grabbed some gold and gunpowder from the crates before opening the crate that contained the captain's journal. I opened it up and started to read. Day 75, we spotted, spotted an, an island, island full of zombies. Lost a lot of men fighting on this island, but it was worth it, I think. This captain's crew had to fight zombies too. They must have been near the artifact. I'll keep reading. We found this strange, mysterious book. So the artifact must be a book. I'm not comfortable holding it, so I gave it to one of my mates. I couldn't believe what I was reading. But why did their boat sink? Did the blobs attack them too? I read on. Day 78. There is a submarine behind us. We're under attack, taking on water. A submarine took them out. I've got a sneaking suspicion I know who was driving it. I better get back to the ship. Alice knows more than she's letting us think. I swam out of the ship, but before I could get anywhere, I was attacked by Chad. I'll make you pay for tricking me. Tricking you? It's not my fault you're a jerk. Chad was surprisingly strong, but he didn't know I had gotten stronger too. Jerry should have finished you when he had the chance. I swung my sword and finished him off. He wasn't going to be bugging anyone now. On day 71 to 74, I returned back to the ship and climbed back up on board. As I climbed aboard, Alice came running up to me. You're back. I'm so happy to see you're okay. Did you find anything interesting? I wanted to confront her about everything, but we didn't know what she was trying to do. There was still a chance her intentions were good, even if she took down a ship. No, unfortunately, I didn't find anything. Looks like our best bet is to try and confront the captain. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear it. Best of luck fighting the captain. Just remember, grab the artifact and bring it to me, so I can destroy it. I headed over to the command tower and unlocked the door of the master key. As I entered the tower, I was immediately attacked by a group of blobs. These guys have been here so close to our base. I had no idea. Using my shotgun, I was able to mow them down pretty quick. They didn't stand a chance against a ranged weapon. I then made my way to the next level and was with another pack of blobs. It was a tight space, so they managed to get some hits in. But by using the table, I was able to get a little bit of space. That was a close one. Now to find the captain. Maybe these guys were just holding him prisoner. On day 75 to 78, I reached the top floor and saw the captain looking out over the base. There was a strange glow about him, but he looked okay. Captain, I'm here to risk. Oh no. The captain had turned around and I could see he was mutated like the other sailors. The glow must have been coming from the artifact. Akuno will return. Akuno is master. Akuno will rule this world. Captain, you've got to break free. We can stop him. The captain was too far gone. He wasn't hearing a word I was saying. Akuno requires your soul. Just then, the captain pulled his gun and started firing. No, I don't want to fight you. I didn't have a choice. If I didn't fight, he would kill me and use me to attack all my friends. The captain was a good shot, but I was a trained seal. Sorry, but this is gonna hurt. I noticed that the captain had started throwing some kind of energy ball at me. It must be a power he got from the Kuno. We can't allow this kind of dark magic in our world. Hang on to your hat. I'm sending you to the underworld. I took aim and passed my shot with one final time, sending the captain to oblivion. After he disappeared, I saw a book laying on the ground. It had to be the artifact, the Necronomicon. Now that just sounds evil. I'm not opening this thing. I can't risk getting sucked into all this madness. Let's see if Alice can actually destroy this thing, or if she's up to something else entirely. On day 79 to 84, I made my way down the tower and headed into the HQ building to meet with Alice. She could barely contain her excitement when she saw me walking up. Zozo, you must have it. I can feel its energy. Quickly, give it to me. Hang on a second. 
I can't give this to you until you explain to me exactly how you plan to destroy it. Don't worry about that. Just give me the book. Suddenly, a glow appeared around Alice. She was possessed by the book, too. Alice leapt forward and tried to grab the book from me. Alice, get a hold of yourself. This book will destroy the world. Akuno promised me power to protect his book. I won't let you stop me. Looks like she was pretty determined, but the seal and I were ready. Pull it! The seal flipped a switch on the wall, which dropped a cage on Alice, trapping her inside. Now listen, you're gonna have to stay here until we can figure out how to destroy this thing. You'll never destroy it. The only thing that can destroy it is Akuno himself. You'll never win. Akuno himself? I ran outside to chat with the seal. Well, it's not looking good. I think the only option is to enter the tunnel and find this Akuno. I'll have to try and trick him into destroying the book somehow. It looks like it's our only option. The seal agreed. On days 85 to 89, I started tearing down the security fence so I could replace it with an even better one. If I failed in my mission, it meant Akuno was headed for this world, and my friends were going to need a fighting chance. After a bit, the new fence was finished. I also needed to finish the statue, so I dove off the ship to go and mine out the remaining supplies I would need. I swam to the bottom and found a deposit of materials I could use. I mined them out, then brought them back to the ship. Then I headed into my camp to grab some supplies to upgrade my weapons. First, I crafted a workbench and set that down. Then, by using the workbench, I crafted some additional shells for my shotgun. To finish up, I then crafted a stock for it as well. Well, I'm about as powered up as I can be. Now I just need to finish that statue, and we'll be on our way. On days 90 to 94, I got started on the last section of the statue. By now, I'm sure you can tell who it is. So, what do you think? Did you guess it correctly? He's a big hero of mine, and hopefully he can inspire the next batch of recruits. With the statue complete, I headed down to have a quick chat with the SEAL. Hey buddy, I just wanted to say thanks for all your help. And here's something to show my appreciation. You're an honorary Navy SEAL too. On days 95 to 97, I headed out of the base, through the security tower, and made my way toward the hole. This could be the last time I ever see the light of day. I descended into the boat and started making my way through the ship corridors, and was immediately attacked by zombies and blocks. Whoa, these guys were ready for me. Kuno must have been coming for him. By using the shotgun, I blasted my way through the first level of the boat. I was having some close calls, but I managed to get through without being harmed. Poor sailors, I don't want to hurt them, but they give me no choice. I continued down to the next level and started facing off against the claws. Be gone, fish face! These monsters were something I could never get used to. I had to banish them from this world. Soon I had made it to the lowest level of the ship and was getting close to the tunnel room. As I approached, I saw another blob. He was bigger than he was, and had a strong glow around him. He must be their leader! By using my sapphire sword, I managed to get some hits in, but he was hitting back too. Oof, yeah, this guy is way more powerful than the other ones. He was using a trident that was stronger than anything I had faced yet. It might be time to try something new. I pulled out my shotgun and worked on creating a distance between us, but it was difficult in tight space. Get a load of this! I kept firing away, and finally all of the zombies were gone. I kept on him until at long last, he was defeated. As he disappeared, I got that familiar surge of adrenaline and grew in size. Check it out, now I have 20 hearts. Feeling better than ever, I entered the room and was immediately sworn. I started fighting off all of the enemies, but there was a lot of them. I had no choice but to hurry and jump into the hole. Here goes nothing. I jumped into the hole, falling for what felt like forever. But eventually I hit the ground with a thud and blacked out. On day 98, I woke up laying at the bottom of the hole. Oh, that didn't feel so good. Where am I? I took in my surroundings and saw I had fallen into some kind of deep cavern. Just ahead, there is a portal. That must take me to Akuno. I don't like the look of that, but I know that with support from you and my friends, we can do anything. I took a deep breath and ran headfirst into the portal. On day 99, I appeared in what looked to be an entirely different dimension. Whoa, this place is insane. It's almost like I'm underwater, but I'm not. Up ahead of me, I could see a huge otherworldly temple. That had to be where Akuno lived. With my gun in hand, I ran forward into the temple. As I ran into the building, I could see Akuno waiting for me. Akuno, you thought you could come to my world and destroy everyone, but instead it's me coming to yours to destroy you. Akuno didn't seem surprised at all. <laughs> Catch me off guard. Please, you've been a pawn in my blood this entire time, just like all the other foolish humans. What does he mean, a pawn? That book can allow me to influence anyone who reads it, but I can't travel to your dimension without it. And now you've brought it straight to me, just in time, too. I understand my millions have nearly completed preparing an army for you. Why are you doing this? What good does destroying another world do for you? Man to this world, but for what? Not a soul roams here, and I'm kept bound by the limitations of this flesh. A human soul gives me freedom I can't even tell so. So I will take the souls of Earth, starting with you. If you want this book, you're gonna have to pry it off of me. That's just what I intend on doing. I immediately opened fire with a shotgun. I didn't seem to be doing it. Pathetic. Your human weapons are no match for my magic. You'll never break my enchantments. 
fired a few more shots, but he was right. This wasn't doing anything. Just then, I noticed there were two purple orbs hanging from the ceiling. They had an almost lifelike quality about them. Let's see what you think about this. I opened fire on one of the orbs, breaking it open, and causing it to explode. No! He didn't like that and started attacking. Clearly, this was doing something. <laughs> oh, not so clever after all, are we? I fired on the other orb, which caused it to explode as well. This time I can tell you. At the end of them, attacking me. Jeez, can these guys at will? There's no way we can let them into our world. The bomb converged to me. in an explosion and was destroyed. I did it. I heard some rolling thunder and suddenly a bolt of lightning came out of the sky, teleporting me away. What now? On day 100, I appeared at the top of the hole back on the ship. Inside of the cage in front of me, I saw one of the zombies start to change. But this time, he changed back into a sailor. Oh, hello? What's going on? Hang on, I'll help you. I jumped up to the cage and busted the sailor out. There were several other cages around the room, so I hurried and broke out all of the other trapped sailors as well. As I did so, I explained everything to them. They were all pretty confused, but I led them up to the flight deck so they could get some rest. With the sailors all safe in their bunks, I met back up with the seal and switchblade. You did it, Zozo. On behalf of the crew, I can't thank you enough. Alice is feeling better too. Just then, Alice walked up. The seal was right. She was looking normal. Oh, Zozo, I feel so awful for everything I've done. But I'm so glad you were here to save the day. Our seal friend here and I are going to go adventuring together. This time, I'm not going to be reading any scary books. I'm just glad everything is back to normal. And thanks for everyone's help. I can't wait to see where our adventures take us next. On day one, I spawned into the amaranth field as a blinged out diamond monkey! Ooh, ah, I'm so shiny! Even if I am a little baby monkey! I hopped around and started exploring the fields! It was so cool and colorful! It seemed like this was going to be a really fun adventure! Until a huge, terrifying creeper spider broodmother started crawling towards me! I'd never seen anything like it! Oh my goodness, you're certainly interesting! I don't think you're being sincere. You don't think I'm interesting at all, do you? You actually think I'm strange and frightening. What? No, you're putting words in my mouth. Well, unlucky for you, I am strange and frightening. And so are my many children. You have children? Yes, 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 so many. And within 100 days, we will rule the world and every other creature will be destroyed. Starting with you, you glittering little monkey! Creeper Spider Broodmother fired a powerful exploding fireball at me that blew up the ground near my feet! I was nowhere near powerful enough to fight back! All I could do was run away as fast as I could! That Broodmother didn't seem nice! I don't want it and it's young to rule over the world, so I better find a way to stop it before it gets out of hand! On day two, I began to explore more of the amaranth fields, taking in the sights and trying my best to learn my way around this interesting, beautiful biome. Hopefully, without running into any more trouble from the broodmother creepy spider or her creepy crawly kids. While I was roaming around, I checked and noticed I had 10 hearts. Not tons of health, so I'd have to be careful not to take too much damage. Lucky for me, I found some apples growing on a tree. Out of reach for ordinary chumps walking around on two legs. But with my diamond monkey agility, I was able to climb up into the branches and grab that sweet fruit. Suddenly, while I was enjoying my apples up in the tree, I heard a telltale hissing coming from below. I peered out and was met with the sight of a creeper down below. There you are. The broodmother said there was a lost little diamond monkey out here alone. Go away. I don't want any trouble. Then you never should have wandered up that tree. You're in the perfect spot for some exploding. The creeper started getting ready to blow. I looked around, trying desperately to find an escape route. 
but there was no tree close enough for me to jump to. I tried to distance myself from the impending blast and braced myself for the loud boom, when all of a sudden, nothing happened. I looked back down, and someone had attacked the creeper, stopping it exploding at the last minute, a phantom fox. You, come with me quickly. More will be on the way, so we have to get out of here. Say no more. On day three, the phantom fox led me through the amaranth fields after saving me. We walked quite a distance from where the creeper had found me before finally arriving at a campfire in a clearing. We'll be safe here. Perhaps now we can be acquainted. I am Philo of the phantom fox clan. Nice to meet you. My name's Zozo. It's been a while since the amaranth fields. I've played host to a diamond creature. This can only be a good omen though. We will need all the help we can get to defeat the broodmother. Oh yeah, I had a run in with her. Not a fan, I'll tell you that much. Philo and I were soon joined by another, a wise old wind serpent. He explained more about what was going on. The creatures of the Amaranth fields used to live in perfect harmony, but the brood mother sought to disrupt all of that and use her spiderlings to control the entire world. We must unite and stop her. Well, I'm no parenting expert, but I don't think she should be making her kids take over the world with her. I'll do what I can. Then welcome to our resistance, Zozo. You are one of us. Philo will guide you. There is much to be done. From day four to day five, Philo and I went off together to search for an ideal location to set up shop. We'd need a base, a place to call home, if we were going to reunite the creatures of the fields and put a stop to the broodmother's schemes. So I knocked down some trees and gathered up some wood. I had enough to craft a wooden pickaxe, and then we went off looking for something stronger, stone. Before long, I had gathered up enough stone to make a full set of stone tools. There was even enough left over to make a snazzy stone sword. Now, I could defend myself if any more mean mobs showed up. Turned out, that was just about to happen. It was while I was building the first few rooms of our base that an icy creeper snuck up on me. It must have just come across us by chance, but it startled me. I panicked and wildly swung my sword, taking the icy creeper down, but looking a little clumsy when I did. Afterwards, Philo came over to talk. Not exactly elegant, are you? Here, if you're going to swing that thing around, let me show you the proper technique. That would be amazing. But first, I'm hungry. Do you have anything I could eat? Oh, fine. Here are some apples. Now, follow me. Philo imparted some phantom fox wisdom to me and taught me how to fight. I could feel myself getting stronger. I now had 30 whole hearts. Philo even taught me a brand new power too, a freezing ice blast. Ice powers. It makes sense, seeing as I'm so iced out. From day six to day eight, Philo sent me off to the cherry blossom forest to gather resources. We needed some wood for the roof of our base, and there were far more trees here than the amaranth fields. Plus, he said I'd need to learn my way around the world if I was going to help the other creatures stop the broodmother. But while I was on my travels, chopping down trees and minding my own business, I noticed someone in a spot of trouble nearby. A stranger looked like they were being attacked by a basalt snake. Away with you, beast, unless you want me to rock the house down. The stranger must have been a geomancer. Who else would make such an awkward rock pun? As he ran away, I drew my stone sword and decided to help out. This was it, my first taste of combat. I attacked the basalt snake. It was a slippery enemy, dodging out of the path of my swings and then lunging towards me when it found an opening. I was barely able to leap out of the way in time, saved at the last second by my monkey agility. At last, I saw an opening and took my chance, landing the winning strike. Not bad going there, lad. You're clearly not one of the broodmother's laggies. Tell you what, you fancy giving me a hand, taking care of some of that creepy spider's creepy spawn? Sounds good to me. That ought to slow her down. From day nine to day 10, I went with the geomancer deeper into the cherry blossom forest, looking for a nest where some of the creeper spider broodmother's children were hiding, waiting for the command to take over. We were trying to sneak up undetected, but suddenly we were ambushed by one of the creeper spiderlings. It was way smaller than the broodmother, but it was still creepy. Mama said you can't be here. I'm gonna tell on you. I fought as hard as I could, but the creeper spiderling was far too tough. Every time I tried to corner it, it would scuttle out of reach. I had no choice but to retreat. I was a little disheartened. If I couldn't take on one of the broodmother's offspring, what chance did I stand against her? Don't be so hard on yourself, lad. Life, as I've experienced, it's a rocky road. Don't you give up now? Gee, thanks. You need a place to stay? Come back to my base. 
From day 11 to day 12, the Geomancer and I made our way back to the base in the Amaranth Fields. Straight away, I got to making a storage room, with plenty of space for all the resources I gathered. I then went on to work on the Geomancer's room. I added a floor to my base, which gave him plenty of space to practice rocking out if he needed to. Well, this is all just too kind, Zozo. I've got no coin, nor any token to give you as thanks, lad. But here, let me use my powers to really rock this joint. The Geomancer really was Stone Cold Brilliant. He built an entire smelting place outside and a new storage room just to say thanks for letting him stay. This was amazing. It really helped improve the base. Thanks to him, things were really coming along. We even got to talking about the Broodmother and why she was so set on taking over the world. I've been studying the fauna of this place for quite some time. It really is fascinating. All the creatures here are bestowed with great power. The Broodmother has the power of dominance, the will to take control of everything. But what's interesting is there is a creature made to be the embodiment of good and selfishness, a diamond monkey. Wow, so you're saying I might be able to defeat her? Zozo, lad, I'd say you've got a better chance than anyone. Later, I paid a visit to a nearby mine and dug up some iron ore. Now I could put that brand new furnace to good use. I turned the ore into some iron ingots, then smelted those with iron replacements for my sword and pickaxe. While I was gone, the Geomancer placed down some fences to make a sheep pen. I lured some sheep in to make a farm. From day 13 to day 15, I spoke to Philo about what I could do to get stronger. He suggested that I should head off on a small journey to do some hands-on training. You're sure about this? Of course, you're a diamond monkey, and that means you're the living embodiment of all good. And being good means banishing evil, so go do some banishing. I headed back to the Cherry Blossom Forest, although I wasn't exactly sure how I was meant to banish evil. That seemed like more of an ongoing life goal than a simple training exercise. I didn't get too much time to think about it though, before I was confronted by another angry creeper. Hey, my twin brother was sent to catch a diamond monkey like you for our master the Broodmother, and he never made it back. Yeah, my Phantom Fox friend sort of destroyed him. He did what? Oh, you're so gonna pay. The creeper came at me. I leaped back to a safe distance in case it exploded. I used my diamond monkey reflexes to stay out of range of the creeper's explosive radius, then hopped in close when it was safe to deal some damage with my iron sword. Finally, I was able to finish him off. But that wasn't all. The defeated creeper dropped a health potion, which gave me a whole 60 hearts when I drank it. The whole encounter had given me the experience to teach myself a brand new move too, the knockback punch. From day 16 to day 19, I ventured out further and came across the deep canyons stretching as far as the eye could see. I had to be careful traveling the higher ground. One wrong step and I'd have a really nasty fall. But it was while traversing my way down to the lower depths of the canyons that I happened to stumble across something pretty unexpected. It was an old journal that somebody must have dropped. I picked it up and took a look, reading some of what was written inside. It started happening much sooner than we thought. The bad needs good to counter it. It can grow and grow. That's why the Broodmother is getting stronger. We need balance, otherwise her evil power will grow until it cannot be contained. It will sweep across the world under the many legs of her and her spawn. Unless we can find someone who as good as she is bad. Suddenly, while I was reading, I heard a familiar hissing drawing near and turned to see a group of creepers behind me. There he is, boys. That's the diamond monkey who took out Jim. Oh, and that the broodmother wants us to destroy too, I guess. Jim was old school. One of the good ones, man. Jim? That other creeper? Yeah, our twin. Why are so many of you twins? Well, that's a funny story, actually. You see, all creepers, they get them, boys. The creepers attacked, but I was feeling confident. After all, I'd only just taken down one of them and gotten stronger as a result. So swinging my sword the way Philo had taught me, I made quick work of dispatching this new group of creepers. From day 20 to day 22, I made the long journey back to the Amaranth Fields. I hadn't returned to base in a few days, so I thought it was about time for a rest and a resupply. Once I was back at my base, I headed back to the mines, gathering up some more iron ore from a vein deep underground. That ore I then turned into iron ingots, which I used then to create a brand new iron chest plate. With all these new hearts, new powerful attacks, and now some added protection against damage, 
I was feeling ready to go back and face the creeper spiderling from earlier. I crept through the cherry blossom forest, making sure to keep to the treetops and using my diamond monkey agility to my advantage. I came across the spiderling, and when I was ready, leapt down from the treetops to attack. My ambush worked, catching the creeper spiderling off guard. Startled, it panicked, and I was able to use my knockback attack to blast it off its feet. Then, using my iron sword, I finished it off. I had beaten the spiderling. But all the commotion had attracted some unwanted attention from someone I didn't realize was nearby, the broodmother. Heh, <laughs> you think that's all it'll take to stop me? Destroy my spiderlings. I don't even care. Even if you're able to kill just one, there will be two more ready to take its place. Look, you're only this powerful because there was no one good enough to cancel out your bad. But I'm around now, and a diamond monkey is the embodiment of goodness. So why don't we call this a stalemate? You and your creepy kids can call off this world domination plan. Just leave everyone alone, and we'll leave you alone. Oh, but I'm not interested in their being balanced. I don't need there to be good. Once my children and I have covered the world, then all that exists, all that is good or bad will be for me to decide. And you won't be around to stop me! The brood mother launched one of her explosive fireballs at me. I thought about fighting back, but instead, I snuck off once she'd lost sight of me. I wasn't strong enough yet, and I could hear the geomancer's lesson in my head. Gotta remember, it's a rocky road. Could really go for some ice cream right about now. From day 23 to day 26, I made my way back to my base. Even though it had taken me a while to get back to it, I had taken down the spiderling that the geomancer had asked me to help defeat. I thought he'd want to hear the good news. That's my boy! I'm proud of you, lad! Since my chestplate had come in handy protecting me against the spiderling, I decided I needed to complete my set of armor. So I headed back to the mines, gathering up some iron ore from the vein. Once it had been made into ingots and those had been smelted, I had a snazzy pair of iron boots, pants, and a helmet to match my chest plate. I even had enough iron left over to make the rest of the iron tools. Ah, Zozo, I see you've learned the value of a good defense. You could say, I had the same idea. Ta-da! The geomancer had been back at it again, making upgrades to my base. This time, he'd constructed a roof on the house and a perimeter wall around the main base to protect the structure against attacks, just like a suit of armor. Great minds really did think alike. From day 27 to day 31, I decided I would head back through the canyons. After discovering the book I had found there, I was wondering if there was any more useful information waiting to be uncovered nearby. I didn't come across any more dropped journals, but I did meet a friendly leopard. My name is Lorne. Delightful to meet the one who cleared out some of those pesky creepers. But be on your guard, my friend. There are more out here, and far worse monstrous creatures have aligned themselves with the wretched broodmother. Thanks for the warning, Lorne. If it's not safe out here, then you should head back to my base. Many thanks to you. I never thought I'd be lucky enough to witness a diamond monkey's selflessness again. Searching around, I didn't find much else of interest, so I headed back to base not long after. Once there, I harvested some sheep's wool from the farm and used it to make some decorative banners that really livened the place up. But my excitement was short-lived as Philo ran up to me in a blind panic. Zozo, come quickly. Our friend is in need of your help. From day 32 to day 35, I rushed after Philo back towards the campfire area. The wind serpent was under attack. There was no time to lose. He had set me on my path, and now I needed to help him. When we arrived, there were creepers coming from all directions. I had never seen so many in one place before. The hissing and rustling they all made was deafening. I climbed a tree, trying to get closer to the wind serpent in order to save him. I could see him fighting back against the creepers, but while his back was turned, one behind him started smoking. Look out! Boom! The creeper set off an explosive chain reaction, causing a bunch of others around it to also explode. By the time the smoke had cleared, only a few were left, but the wind serpent had been caught in the blast. No! I leaped down from the tree and attacked the remaining creepers. I finished off what was left of them, but it was far too late to save my friend. From day 36 to day 39, I tried to take my mind off of what had happened. I decided I'd go somewhere quiet to be alone with my thoughts and ended up wandering into the Aspen Forest. While I was there, thinking about the poor wind serpent, someone came up to me. It was a green manticore. Uh, excuse me, I couldn't help notice the glimmer of a diamond monkey. Uh, aren't you meant to be the embodiment of goodness? Yeah, I suppose, although I'm not feeling too good right now. 
Well, uh, sorry to bother you, but I just wanted to ask uh, for your help. The manticore showed me to the source of his troubles, a horrifying undead scorpion. I pulled out my sword and rushed into battle. The undead scorpion was vicious, swiping at me with its tails as I tried my best to defend. With a blast of my knockback attack, followed up with a combo of an ice blast, I was able to defeat the monstrous creature. Oh, thank you so much. That thing was so menacing. The green manticore explained that some creatures believed the power of the broodmother's bat was still getting stronger, so much that it was raising creepy creatures from beyond the grave. I had to stop this. From day 40 to day 43, I headed back to base to recollect myself and see if my friends had any more advice on how I could get strong enough to stop the broodmother. Much to my surprise, they had been working on improving the place while I had been gone. Philo had even made some nice new bookshelves and couches and came to me with a special request. Zozo, with all this extra space, I think my friends from the Phantom Fox Clan would feel very at home here. What do you think? Philo, if they're anything like you, then we'd be lucky to have them here. With that, Philo let out a loud screeching call into the air to draw in his fellow Phantom Foxes. Before long, even more of them had started slinking out from the Amaranth Fields, and I welcomed them to their new home. Then, a familiar feline face showed up. It was Lorne the Leopard. Glad you made it. Greetings, friend. Forgive me, but I am in need of your help. On my way, I was attacked by another ogre, a ghastly thing that has allied itself with the broodmother. Her badness has attracted all manner of otherworldly beasts. Say no more, Lorne. You rest up here and heal. I'll take care of that nether ogre. From day 44 to day 49, I started to search for the nether ogre that had harmed my poor leopard friend Lorne. I decided the best place to start looking would be the canyons, since that's where I had last seen Lorne. If there was no sign, then I'd just retrace her steps heading back towards the base. I thought maybe I'd have some luck finding the nether ogre when I felt the ground start to shake. But where I was expecting to see the ogre emerge from, instead, I saw a monster I didn't want to find. It was the Broodmother! Ah! There you are! I've been looking all over for you! Get back! How did you even find me? Oh dear! The oh-so-goody-goody -goody diamond monkey doesn't know! Wait! You managed to find me in the Aspen Forest too! How do you always know where I am? You should really pay more attention! My spiderlings are everywhere! They're very good at hiding, and they tell me everything they see! You're spying on me? Why? Well, I can't have you finding my nest, can I? And you're completely oblivious to where it is! Let's keep it that way! Something snuck up from behind me! The legendary Silver Skeleton! The Broodmother tricked me into an ambush! The mighty Silver Skeleton took up its weapon and came at me! And I had no choice but to fight back! From day 50 to day 53, I crossed swords with the Silver Skeleton! I tried my best to spot where the Broodmother had got to, but she had scuttled back to the shadows, leaving her undead minion to finish me off! I did my best to parry each of his moves and tried to take a swing at him when I could! But then, I had a thought! If the Broodmother's spiderlings were really watching me, then why not make sure she knew exactly what I could do? I froze him to the spot, so he was stuck fast and couldn't move. One more strike with my blade, and he was defeated. I had done it, but frozen pieces weren't the only things that fell to the floor. Among the icy remains of the silver skeleton were some mystical diamonds. I reached out to grab them and instantly had a flashback. I could see another diamond monkey like me. He wandered the same places, met the same friendly creatures, but there was one difference. Back then, there was balance. I wondered what happened to him, where he had gone, and how it had caused good and bad to become uneven. Took those mystical diamonds with me. I had a great use for them in mind later on. From day 54 to day 57, now that the distraction of the silver skeleton was dealt with, I continued my search for the nether ogre. When I ventured further into the canyons than I'd gotten before, it didn't take me long to track him down. There was no time for chit-chat with this monster. He came right at me, ready to attack. I guess the mobs that the broodmother was teaming up with weren't all the brightest bunch, but they were some of the baddest. The ogre was big and strong. Its heavy fists were like huge boulders. I had to remember to use my smaller size and stature to my advantage, keeping out of the way. But without any tall trees nearby, I couldn't leap up to safety. Eventually, though, the nether ogre's angry swings and the frustration at not being able to catch me soon got the better of him. He started to get tired, slowing down, and once he was almost worn out, BAM! My kickback punch knocked him right off the mountain! With the nether ogre defeated, I headed back to my base in the Amaranth Fields to tell Lorne the good news. Why, thank you, friend. I'll sleep a little easier knowing that brute is gone. 
Say, Lorne, did you ever meet another diamond monkey before me? Of course. He was as kind and selfless as you, Zozo, but also wise and noble. Nobody knows where he went. Perhaps his time was up, but once he was gone, much of his goodness left with him, apart from that which he passed on to others. That's what's allowed the broodmother to gain such power. There was an absence of good in the world, so she filled it with bad. From day 58 to day 62, I decided to do some work on the base. After all, with the whole Phantom Fox clan here, the place needed some improvements. I expanded the pen that was holding the sheep, making more room so that more of them could fit in. More sheep meant more wool. Then, I had to get working on my idea to use the mystical diamonds I'd picked up from the silver skeleton. Problem was, I didn't have enough to actually make anything. Maybe I could find some normal diamonds to make up for it. Sure enough, I headed down into the mines and found just what I was looking for. Diamonds, and plenty of them. I started chipping them out of the stone wall, and before long, I had enough for my plan. I used the diamonds, both the normal kind and the mystical ones, to craft myself a brand new diamond sword and a pickaxe to match. Now I can dish out a lot more damage. Zozo, come take some time to relax, sit with us a while, and see the good you're putting back into the world. Philo invited me to come and hang out with him and the rest of his Phantom Fox friends. They'd really made the base into a more homely place, with a roaring fireplace and a nice living area where we all sat and chilled for a while. Philo also mentioned that they built a small cottage home for themselves and connected all the buildings with a nice path. The base was really coming together! From day 63 to day 66, I was finishing up a few minor improvements on my base when the Geomancer came to me with a new lead on what our next move should be. I've been feeling a rumbling, lad! Tremors in the ground! The stones, they speak to me, rocking my very soul! Okay, and what's the sound of the underground saying? It might be telling me where the Broodmother's lair is! There's a lot of movement in the Cypress Swamplands! It is a vile, putrid place! No wonder the Broodmother feels so at home there! I'll check it out! I headed off to the location the Geomancer pointed out. He was right about one thing, the place was gross! I had a weird feeling while I was there, almost as if I was being watched, and not just by the broodmother spiderlings. Suddenly, I got startled by a warped phantom. I got ready for a fight, thinking that this was another undead being that the broodmother had raised. But to my surprise, he was actually friendly. Oh, thank the heavens, a diamond monkey. Goodness will be restored, and then I can rest again. That foul creeper spider broodmother dragged me out from my eternal slumber. But I was at peace. I'll do what I can. Hey, maybe there's some way to get you back to wherever you were before. If you could, that'd be wonderful. From day 67 to day 70, I traveled across the Cypress Swamplands with the Warped Phantom, and we soon came across the source of the trouble. One of the Broodmother's minions, the Wither Spider, had disrupted the Phantom's tomb, and it was stopping his spirit from resting. So I leapt into action to give the ghost a hand. I wasn't anticipating such a tough fight, but even with my new mystical diamond sword, the Wither Spider was standing strong. I made a split-second decision to hit it with an Ice Blast attack, then strike it again with my mystical diamond sword, finally getting rid of it for good. Oh, thank you very much. Back to peace I go. From day 71 to day 74, I continued searching around the Cypress Swamplands, as creepy and stinky as it was. I was told that the Creeper Spider Broodmother was lurking around here, so I can't give up until I've gathered some valuable intel. I climbed up to the tree canopy and walked until I saw something. Oh, a diamond gorilla! That reminds me, you should search ZOZO on YouTube to find tons of awesome Minecraft 100 Days Adventures! But things were about to get even more interesting because the Creeper Spider Broodmother herself crawled out of the darkness towards me! Welcome, Zozo, you silly little monkey! If I knew you were coming, I would have made tea! Instead, I'm going to make a fool of you! Look, I don't necessarily think we need to fight! It's all about finding the balance between good and evil! We can find that without needing to fight each other! You want balance? I want domination! And I know exactly how to get it! I've created so many creepers and so many creeper spiderlings! And in the end, if I have enough, them all blowing up at once would destroy the entire overworld! So everyone needs to do what I say, or that's exactly what will happen! That's diabolical! It's effective! 
detective! You could learn a thing or two from me! Now run, little monkey! Run! The creeper spider brood mother fired another exploding fireball, and I ran for my life! From day 75 to day 78, I was sitting around my base, confused and afraid. Just couldn't stop thinking about what the creeper spider brood mother had said to me. Would she really blow up the entire overworld to get what she wants? That's a level of evil I've never even seen before, and I'm not sure any good would ever balance that out. But I was able to calm down with the help of a distraction. A visit from Lorne the Leopard. Zozo, take a look outside. I made a cool watchtower on the base, so we can keep an eye out for any approaching creepers. We'll be extra safe now. I took a look outside and saw that Lorne had done an amazing job on the watchtower. Seeing it made me forget about my doubts for a bit. And then, something even cooler happened when Philo the Phantom Fox approached me. Zozo, I've been discussing with the rest of the Phantom Fox clan, and we've decided to give you one of our most treasured family antiques to use in your fight against the creeper threat. The magical enchanted guitar! Wow, this is amazing! He passed me the guitar, and the second I equipped it and started to play a sick tune, I found my power growing. I reached 100 hearts, became bigger, stronger, and now had a new special ability, firing a powerful green laser. I'd hate to be the creeper spider brood mother now. From day 79 to day 84, I went back out to the cypress swamplands again with my newfound power and confidence, ready to take on the creeper spider brood mother for round two. Couldn't see her anywhere. Instead, I was attacked by a nasty gang of whisperers, which I was able to pretty easily cut down with my awesome guitar. I can see why the Phantom Fox clan cared about this so much. I heard rustling in the bushes and turned to see a rabbit wolf hopping towards me. Hey, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. But for what? Those whisperers have been a pain in my butt forever. And you finally took care of them. Here, and the spare diamond helmet. It didn't fit me anyway. Oh, wow, thank you. I'm better guarded now than ever before. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to my base, eager to show my friends my new shiny diamond helmet when I saw a little gang of creepers crawling into my base, closing in on an innocent big axolotl. Oh no, I need to run them off. I fired ice blasts and swung my sword until the creepers were gone. Thankfully, none of them exploded near any of the structures on my base, but that didn't mean I could let them get away. But during the fight, I also saw that a creeper was running towards the innocent big axolotl. I couldn't let that happen. I ran over and destroyed the creeper immediately, even while the others ran away. But the big axolotl was extremely grateful for the help. Thank you, Zozo. I owe you my life. Stay safe out there, big axolotl. From day 90 to day 94, I traced back the way from where the creepers came, and it led me to the cypress swamplands. I reached an area that looked like some kind of nest, where I can only imagine the creeper spider broodmother was waiting inside. But what was even more worrying was the thing waiting on the bridge to the base. A massive, heavily armed vindicator. You're not a creeper or undead. What are you doing here? I'm working for the big mama, and she wants me to show you that diamonds aren't forever. But why would you want to work for her? She and her creepers want to rule the world. Yeah, and I think they're gonna, so I want to fight for the winning team. So that's enough talking. Let's destroy each other. And with that, the battle began. From day 95 to day 97, I fought the Vindicator who worked for the Creeper Spider Broodmother. He was one of the most skilled opponents I'd ever faced, and he was dealing a lot of damage against me. But I managed to fight back. Little by little, I turned the tide until the Vindicator was on the ropes, and eventually, he gave up. Please, I yield. Have mercy. I'll let you go. But first, tell me something I don't know about your boss. Tell me something that'll help me win this battle for good. Okay, okay. Well, you don't need to worry about taking out the little creepers. Just focus on taking out the brood mother. She's got, like, a hive mind. You take out her, all the creepers go with her. And with that, the Vindicator ran off, never to be seen again. So I just need to defeat the brood mother to defeat the whole army? Now I know for sure what I need to do. On day 98, as I prepared to return to the Cypress Swamplands to take on and defeat the Creeper Spider Broodmother once and for all, I decided to speak to each one of my basemates one-on-one. -on -one. First, I spoke to Lorne the Leopard. I believe in you, Zozo. You're living up to the legacy of the Diamond Monkey. Once you're done, the forces of good and evil will be balanced once more. Next, I went and spoke to Philo the Phantom Fox. 
The safety of our clan owes much to you, Zozo. It's been an honor to work with you. I look forward to celebrating with you once you've defeated the evil. And finally, I spoke to the Geomancer. You're gonna squish that nasty spider like a big old newspaper, Zozo. Rock on, man, rock on! You're stone cold! And with all those words of encouragement, I was ready to go! On day 99, I made my way back to the freaky, stinky Cypress Swamplands. I'd conserved all my energy, ready to unleash it in one big, awesome final battle with the Creeper Spider Broodmother! I know the truth now. If I can defeat her, then I'll defeat her entire Creeper army! But there was one problem in the way. The Creeper army I was just talking about, all surrounding and guarding the Creeper nest. There was no way I could fight them all alone, and if I did, it might leave me weak and tired to take on the Mean Green Mother herself. That's when, in my moment of need, the warped phantom whose spirit I'd helped lay to rest came running towards me. He was here to repay my good deed. Zozo, go forth and destroy the evil that has plagued this land for so long. I'll distract your awful spawn. You get in there and save the world. I will, Warped Phantom. Thank you. As the creepers swarmed the phantom, I snuck up the stairs and into the well that the broodmother repurposed into its own nest. On day 100, I crawled down into the depths of the nest where I could take on the creeper spider broodmother alone. She was waiting for me, and she wasn't happy to see me. You! You're not meant to be a diamond monkey! This is my domain! Soon, nowhere is going to be your domain. I wanted to coexist with you. I wanted there to be balance. But you left me no choice. All we can do is fight. Then why even waste time talking? Allow me to destroy you so me and my creepers can finally claim the world that is rightfully ours! And so, the battle began! With my sick guitar, I began fighting the creeper spider Broodmother as she shot her exploding fireballs at me. The battle was hard. She was the toughest enemy I'd ever faced. But I still had one more power to use against her. I knocked her towards the exit, and that scared her off. She prepared a surprise attack as I exited the room, but I was undeterred. She started to escape, but I summoned all my energy into one attack. My ultimate green laser! With that one last attack, the Creeper Spider Broodmother died, taking all of her Creeper army with her, and the forces of good and evil were balanced across the land once more. On day one, I spawned into the mountains as a diamond skeleton. Whoa, even with 10 hearts, I've got to be the most valuable bag of bones in the overworld. I wonder what kind of powers I have. But I didn't have any time to think about any potentially cool powers. A big, strong earth elemental rose out of the ground right in front of me. You, you are the skeleton that has defiled this land. Wait, what? That's impossible. I just got here. Your feeble excuses have no power here, you bony fiend. You should come with me before I'm forced to do anything drastic. No offense, buddy, but I feel like you don't have my best intentions at heart, so I'm getting out of here immediately. And I made good on my promise, turning and running as fast as I could. There was only one problem. Diamond skeletons can't actually run very fast. Okay, so I know super speed isn't one of my powers. Pretty soon, the earth elemental had caught up to me, and I had to stop. I was feeling totally out of breath. Wow, that was incredibly embarrassing, you sad little skelly. Come with me before you humiliate yourself even more. Sure, okay, just give me a second to catch my breath. On day two, the earth elemental ushered me back to a fortress high in the mountains, which looked like it'd be impossible to take over. This is the sanctum of sanctity. That'd be hard to say three times fast. Silence, skeleton. You will stand before our ruler tomorrow and be given a fair trial for your crimes. What'll happen if I lose the trial? Oh, that's simple. You'll be executed. What? He didn't answer any more of my questions. Instead, he led me into the Sanctum of Sanctity and threw me into some kind of prison cell. Please, let me out. What about my human rights? You're a skeleton. Skeletons don't have human rights. And with that, he left and locked the door behind him. I was alone, or so I thought. There was actually a gold pig in the cell with me. Oink, oink. Hey there, bud. Name's Gary. Gary the Gold Pig. What are you in for? Hey, Gary. I'm Zozo. These guys trapped me in here for no reason. Have you been falsely imprisoned too? Well, not exactly. I was stealing. But I wasn't hurting anyone while I was doing it. That's better than nothing, I guess. These guys are huge jerks. We need to get out of here before we're tried and executed. Easier said than done, my friend. These walls are impenetrable, especially when you don't have any tools. 
Our conversation was interrupted when the Earth Elemental who trapped me in here came back, opened the door, and stepped inside. Will you two be quiet? I can hardly think, let alone stand guard, while listening to your inane babbling. How about instead, you... Without even thinking, I punched him, and that one punch completely destroyed him. Wow, that was amazing, Zozo. You're like some kind of one punch man. I guess that's my first power, diamond hard punches. Let's get out of here before anyone else can find us. And that's exactly what we did. We escaped the Sanctum of Sanctity and ran off in different directions. On day three, I continued walking through the mountains. It was an exhausting process. I may have had those powerful diamond punches, but I still had absolutely sucky walking speed. All this walking is making me hungry. I wonder if I can find any food around here. I searched until I found an apple tree, which I knocked down some apples with another powerful diamond punch. Phew, these punches really take it out of me too. I should probably only use them in emergencies, just to be safe. I picked up the wooden blocks and the apples, eating them to replenish my hunger bar. I then continued my journey. Wait, what's that rattling sound? It almost sounds like bones. That's when I turned and saw a huge imposing figure. It was a mutant skeleton, and he was even bigger than I'd imagined. Oh my gosh, you're huge! It's nice of you to say, stranger. My name is Odakuro. It means rattling skull. What is your name? My name is Zozo. It means, uh, well, it means Zozo. Interesting. It's rare to see a skeleton brave enough to wander around here. And I've never seen one quite as shiny as you either. You must be skilled and powerful. Not as skilled and powerful as I'd like to be, sadly. That, my dear Zozo, I can help with. Follow me back to my dojo. Alrighty, Odokoro, lead the way. I followed Odokoro across the mountains, relieved to finally have a friend who could seemingly hold his own in a fight. From day four to day five, we arrived at Odokoro's dojo out in the bone dry Mojave Desert. What exactly does dojo mean, Odokoro? Is it like some kind of base? It's where I teach people to fight. You see, I am the greatest warrior in all of the overworld, and it is my privilege to teach others to fight as well as me, so they can fight for what they believe in. That sounds incredible, Otokuro! Please, Zozo, call me Sensei. It means teacher. And the first part of learning to fend for yourself is learning to put a roof over your head. Take this stone pickaxe and this stone sword. Make yourself a home in the desert. The harsh environment will make you hardy and strong. Yes, Sensei! My sensei Otokuro gave me the stone sword and pickaxe, and I went off on my own, traveling until I found a nice spot in the Mojave to build my base. I mined up some stone and some sand that I could use to start building myself a cool little base. It wasn't much yet, but it seemed like a cool way to begin my training. As I stopped building to look back and admire my work, another earth elemental snuck up on me and started to attack. I knew you were an evil skeleton. You destroyed one of my fellow elementals, and now I'll destroy you. But I was ready to fight back. With my stone sword, I was able to beat the Earth Elemental, gaining enough XP in the process to level up and get stronger. I was bigger, a little faster, and now had 20 hearts instead of just 10. And what's this new power I feel coursing through my fists? Without even thinking, I turned and walked into a tree, blowing it up. Whoa, I guess my new wall demolition ability can knock down walls and apparently trees as well. That's awesome. Darn, I need to replant this tree now. From day six to day eight, I walked around the desert looking for new things to punch and test out my awesome strength. If this is how strong I am at the start of Sensei Otokuro's training, imagine how awesome I'll be as he trains me even more. During my wandering, I happened upon a familiar face too. It was Gary, the light-fingered gold pig I'd met inside the Sanctum of Sanctity. Hey, Gary, how's it going? Zozo, don't sneak up on me like that. I'm on edge enough as it is after what I've been through. Oh no, what's wrong, Gary? Are you okay? I was attacked by this crazy mutant enderman. If I didn't run as fast as I could, he would have destroyed me. You've got to be careful, Zozo. There are some real dangerous people out there. I know exactly what you mean. That's why I'm training with Sensei Otokuro, so I can get strong enough to fight off bad guys like that. Sensei Otokuro? Why does that name sound so familiar? Oh well, maybe I'll remember it later when I'm less stressed. And with that, Gary went on his way. Unsettled by the knowledge of how many dangerous creatures are out there, I returned to my sensei's base, ready for his next lesson. Climbing up the hanging ladders, I found him at the top of the dojo in his living quarters. You've done well against the Earth Elemental, Sozo. But to improve, you must face stronger opponents. 
There is a mutated bee out in the mangrove swamp, a formidable foe for someone of your strength. Go forth and destroy him and see your powers grow. From day 9 to day 10, I followed Sensei Orokuro's instructions and went out to the mangrove swamp, seeking to meet with and battle this mutated bee. He sounds like a tough customer, but I believe I'm ready to take him on. It didn't take me long to find him. His bright yellow and black stood out against the colors of the swamp. Buzz off, kid. I don't want to fight anyone. I left my fighting days behind me long ago. I hurt too many people. That's not who I am anymore. If you were a villain once, you're a villain now, mutated bee. Sensei Otokuro demands that I fight you. Otokuro? I haven't heard that name in years. Well, kid, if you want to fight, I'll give you the fight of your life. The mutated bee fought me, and he was every bit as tough as Sensei Otokoro had said. I did manage to defeat him in the end, but by then, I barely had any hearts left. I, I can't rush my training. If I do, I think I'm really gonna get hurt. On my way out of the swamp, I ran into none other than Gary the Gold Pig. Oh hey, Zozo. You're not looking so hot, buddy. Maybe take this health potion. Eh, I stole it from some guy. I drank the health potion Gary gave me and breathed a sigh of relief as my health replenished itself. Thanks, Gary, you're a lifesaver. Sensei Otokuro will be pleased to see that I'm doing okay. There's that name again. Gosh, where did I hear it? Uh, guess I'll let you know if it comes back to me. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to the dojo of Sensei Otokuro, eager to tell him about how well I'd done in the battle with the mutated bee. Your power grows, Zozo, but you still have much to learn. That being said, I see the potential for true strength in you, but a true warrior feels no fear. Go first into the darkness to make fear your ally, then return to the mangrove swamp, find the lethal swamp pig clan, and destroy every last one of them. Destroy a whole clan? Isn't that a little harsh, Sensei? Never, ever question my teaching, Zozo. Perform the task, your Sensei wills it. Feeling doubtful, but knowing that my Sensei must know best, I found the darkest darkness I could find, a mining cave. I explored the dark, worrying about what could lurk behind every corner. However, while down there in the dark, I discovered something awesome. A dusty old chest containing a few pieces of iron armor, an iron sword, and an iron pickaxe. The sensei really is always right. I equipped the sword and the armor pieces, then left the cave. But just as I was about to exit, I was stopped in my tracks by another earth elemental. You won't escape this time, you skeleton fiend! I'm really getting tired of you guys. The fight didn't last long. With my new power and new iron sword, I defeated him in no time. From day 13 to day 15, following Sensei Otokuro's instructions, I went back to the mangrove swamp and searched through until I found a small settlement full of pigs. This must be the Swamp Pig Clan. They don't look like a gang of lethal warriors, they just look like peaceful little pigs. What's going on? I decided to investigate further, venturing into the settlement and approaching the largest of the Swamp Pigs. Excuse me, sir, but are you the head of the legendary Swamp Pig Warrior Clan? That just made him laugh. Warrior Clan? We're a clan of peaceful farmers, living off the fat of the land. We don't know the first thing about fighting. I have no idea where you got that from. Then I'm... No, this isn't right. I'm sorry for bothering you, Mr. Swamp Pig. Confused and worried, all I could do was leave the settlement as quickly as I could, making a beeline back to the Mojave Desert. Sensei Otokuro has some explaining to do. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to Sensei Otokuro's base and told him everything that had happened. He was furious with me. You dare go against my orders after I explicitly told you not to question me? But Sensei, they weren't warriors. I am no longer your sensei. Be gone from the dojo, Zozo. I cannot teach someone who doesn't respect and honor my judgment. I was devastated, but I had no choice but to leave. I guess that I just wasn't cut out to be an awesome warrior in the end. I might have just been doomed to be a sad, slow diamond skeleton forever. When I got back to my base, Gary was waiting for me. Zozo, Zozo, I remember where I heard that name before, Sensei Urokuro. He's not even my sensei anymore, Gary. There's no point. But it was the mutant Enderman. When he attacked me, he said, Sensei Otakuro will be so pleased. He must have been on his orders. Wait, Otakuro has other students, and they're out there attacking people? Oh no, I need to go back to the mangrove swamp. I ran back to the Swamp Pig Clan settlement as quickly as I could, but it was already too late. Otakuro was there, and he'd already destroyed all of them. You monster! It's better to be a monster than a weakling, Zozo. 
My best students understand this. You are but a naive little fool. What? It's foolish to not want to attack innocents? There are no innocents, Zozo. Only practice. I'll give you one chance to decide. Are you with me or against me? I could never be with you or any of your horrible students. I pulled out my iron sword and ran towards him to attack, but he knocked me out cold in a single strike. From day 20 to day 22, I woke up, dazed and aching, in the ruins of the Swamp Pig settlement. Otokuro hadn't left a single survivor. That monster! I feel so terrible for ever helping him. I can't believe all his students have been terrorizing the overworld, and I was almost one of them. As I was making my way through the swamps, I saw Gary the Gold Pig emerging from the distance and trotting towards me. Zozo, thank goodness you're alive. I had no idea you were up against such terrifying enemies. The world is even scarier than I thought. But it doesn't have to be, Gary. Come back to my base with me. I'll build you a room, and we'll start working on a battle plan to take down these evildoers once and for all. You know what? You have a point, Zozo. I've spent my whole life stealing from people. Now, I want to do something right. Let's go, buddy. I went back to my base in the Mojave Desert with Gary and built a new building for him to live in. It felt good to finally be allied with someone whose worst crime was stealing potions and not destroying whole clans of innocents for fun. From day 23 to day 26, I decided to investigate the mountain some more and see if I could track down any of Sensei Otokoro's other sadistic students. If they were out here destroying settlements in the overworld, then they needed to be stopped at once. While I was exploring, it didn't take me long to overhear a cry for help from a passing mushroom summoner. Please spare me, kind skeleton. There's a mutant zombie right behind me. Destroy it, I beseech you. I don't know what a beseech is, but you'd better get behind me. Sure enough, there was a vile, brainless mutant zombie coming after the poor summoner. I leapt in to defend the innocent mushroom summoner with a swing of my sword, but the shuffling undead was far stronger than I'd ever expected. The mutant zombie was tough, and he got a few powerful hits on me. I swung back with my diamond skeleton punches, and while it took a few more than usual, I had soon knocked his health right down. You can come back out now. Oh, thank you. Please help yourself to this. It's the latest of my horticultural findings, a fungus imbued with magical properties. Um, thanks. I ate the mushroom and could suddenly feel myself getting stronger. I now had 50 whole hearts. I could shoot energy blasts from my hands. Wow, now this'll be fun, guy. From day 27 to day 31, I roamed the mountains some more. The encounter with the mutant zombie was playing on my mind. Where had that horrid undead creature come from? Was it connected to my nefarious former sensei in some way? I got distracted by a flock of sheep that looked like they'd lost their shepherd, or that perhaps something bad had happened to them. Hey there, little guys. It's not safe for you all to be up here on the mountainside. You'd better come back to my base where you'll be safe. If we come across your owner, I'm sure he'll be glad I got you guys to safety. So I headed back to my base and got to work settling up a pen for the sheep. Once I was done, Gary was excited to show me something. Come check it out, Zozo. They built us a brand new storage room. Now we've got somewhere to keep all our loot. I mean, uh, oops, old habits. Uh, I mean, all the equipment we can use to bring the fight to Sensei Otakuro. Speaking of Otakuro, within his dojo in the Mojave Desert, my former teacher was conferring with one of his deadliest students. Sensei, I have followed your teachings and laid waste to another settlement. Their souls are now forever cursed to have fallen at my hand. That will make them perfect candidates to join the ranks of your undead army. Good work, apprentice. You've been more loyal than that cowardly skeleton. And I have a new task for you. Bring me the diamond skull of Zozo! From day 32 to day 35, I decided to backtrack to the fortress high in the mountains. I had realized that those earth elementals who had captured me might have only done so because they thought I was working for Sensei Otokuro. After all, one had called me evil when he saw I was carrying out Otokuro's commands. But I figured I would need allies. Me and my gold pig pal weren't going to be able to take him down alone. Look over there! It's the diamond skeleton working with Otokuro! Get him! Whoa, hold on guys! I'm not here to fight! It was too late. An earth elemental was coming straight towards me. We clashed swords. I had to hold off from using my diamond hard punches and energy blasts. I needed to convince them that I meant no harm. Listen to me. I'm not following Otokoro's teachings anymore. He's a barbaric, irredeemable monster. Well, it took you so long to realize. Don't be mean. I was tricked. Then you should talk with our boss. The earth elementals brought me before their leader, a wise old illusioner. You have renounced Otokoro's vile ways. Good. 
then perhaps you'll be the one to put a stop to his reign of terror. I'll take him down. He's hurting innocent people, and he's got to be stopped! I must convene with my Earth Elementals. I can provide you with the means to stop Otakuro, but first, we must decide if you are trustworthy. Now go! From day 36 to day 39, I didn't want to waste any time waiting on the Illusionist's decision. I needed to get stronger in the meantime. I decided it was time to upgrade my armor, so I went searching the mines for the remaining pieces to complete the set. And boy oh boy, I didn't just find what I was looking for, but struck a mother load of diamonds too! It was almost like being a diamond skeleton up to draw me to where they were hidden underground. I could sense them without even realizing it. After I had gathered up the diamonds, ready to craft some neat stuff with them later, Gary excitedly called me back to base. Check it out, Zozo! Look what I stole! I mean, acquired while you were gone! It was a special gong of weakening! After striking it, it weakens all enemies around me for seven seconds! But before I had a chance to try it out, an armored mountaineer approached my base! You're Zozo, right? I'm a messenger. I've been sent by the Illusioner. He's ready to speak with you now and request your presence back at the Earth Elemental Fortress. From day 40 to day 43, I made the long trek back to where I'd last met the Illusioner. But as I approached the fortress, I immediately noticed something was wrong. The diamond skeleton was here. Tell me what you told him or suffer in the name of Sensei Odokuro. It was the mutant Enderman. It must have been one of Otokuro's other students. He was turning the place upside down, battling with the Earth Elementals as they desperately tried to defend the fortress against his attacks. But his training, he'd clearly been following Sensei Otokuro's brutal teachings, and they were no match for the mutant Enderman. I ran over to the Illusioner as quickly as I could. Illusioner, quick! We need to do something! Zozo, no! Drawing you out is what Otokuro wants. My elementals will die before they give away your location. But we must flee before Odokuro's student realizes you're here. From day 44 to day 49, I hurriedly escorted the Illusioner back to the safety of my base. He seemed upset about the attack on his fortress, but I didn't really know what to say to comfort him. Once we'd made it back, he sat me down to reveal his decision. I have opted to trust you with this, Zozo. I believe your remorse for serving Odokuro to be genuine. I know all too well how deceptive he can be, which is why I will impart to you this knowledge. There is a way we can stop him, but it requires a weapon known only as the Destroyer, and to rebuild it will be no easy task. I can guide you through the first steps, but to complete it requires secrets I do not possess. Well, where can I find the rest of the steps to build the Destroyer? Patience, for now, here's how to get started. I followed the Illusioner's instructions written on the blueprint to the letter, making sure I had done everything I could right now to make a start on the Destroyer. It was kind of nice having him help me along, almost like having a new Sensei who wasn't as evil as Sensei Otokuro. Once I'd done all I could, that was when the Illusioner told me about an ancient book of secrets that contained instructions for finishing the Destroyer. It was lost somewhere in the mangrove swamp, so I began to make my way over there as fast as my slow skeleton legs would carry me. From day 50 to day 53, I searched high and low in the stinky mangrove swamp for anywhere that might be housing the Book of Secrets. I was expecting to find an old temple or an abandoned cave, but there was nothing of the sort anywhere around. Eventually, I had to change up my approach. I didn't know where to look, but one of the locals might. I struck up a conversation with the first person I met, a royal guard. Book of Secrets? Sorry, Giza, no clue. Nobody's seen it in a dog's age. Been lost in the swamp. Great, that's super helpful. I don't suppose anyone knows what's written in it or how to rebuild the destroyer to stop Sensei Otokuro? Otokuro? Blimey, mate! He's a tough customer! You know he once commanded an army of mutant undead? He did? That's horrible! Yeah, it was! Otokuro believed in being the strongest bloke around, and he trained himself up a nasty gang of blighters. He never wanted them to be tougher than he was, so he kept some stuff to himself. Then if any of his pupils ever croaked, he'd use necromancy to bring them back and make them fight for him as undead zombies. But eventually, he crossed the wrong fella, some real brain box who built a device that would destroy Otokuro. That's why it's called the Destroyer, see? Wow, I never would have guessed that. Well, Otokuro got wind of what was being made to defy him and tried to wreck him. But it blew up in his face and took out a lot of his undead army. Rumor has it, he's been trying to build his forces back up ever since. I still had no clue where the Book of Secrets was hidden. I didn't know the Mangrove Swamp well enough to find it. 
Without the book, I couldn't complete the destroyer just yet, so instead, I headed back to base. From day 54 to day 57, I was making my way back to my base, taking a longer detour through the mountains just in case any more of Sensei Orokuro's students were causing trouble nearby. Little did I realize, one of them was much closer than I'd anticipated. Suddenly, the mutant Enderman burst out of the shadows and attacked me, wielding all the fury and fear of Orokuro's twisted teachings. There you are, the one who ran away! At last, I shall defeat you and bring that diamond skull of yours to my sensei as a trophy! I had no choice but to fight back, but I couldn't land even a single energy blast on the evil Enderman! He would just teleport out of the way, and each blast would miss! Then he started using his special abilities, like picking up blocks, throwing them at me, and cloning himself! I couldn't risk being captured and brought back to Sensei Orokuro, or worse! So, I had to dash. I luckily made my escape! Meanwhile, within his lair, Sensei Orokuro was summoning the latest addition to his undead army! By my hand, I command these ancient bones to rise, return to the land of the living, and follow my teachings, mighty skeleton vanguard! From day 58 to day 62, battered and exhausted, I was relieved to finally make it back to the safety of my base. After a brief nap to regain my strength, Gary, my gold pig pal, was eager to show off his latest, definitely not stolen, project. Hey, hey, Zozo! Check it out, a brand new furnace for us. Now we can really turn up the heat on old Okuro, eh? Get it? Yeah, I got it, Gary. Great job. The base was looking great now, but I was concerned after facing the mutant Enderman and barely making it away alive. We needed somewhere well defended, so I gathered up lots of sandstone to build a bunker out of it, although it was tricky because the sand kept falling on my head. I eventually gathered enough and started building the bunker. Speaking of defense, I thought it was about time I defended myself a little better too. My old iron armor had done the trick until now, but it was useless against Sensei Otakuro's stronger students. So I headed into the mines and let my diamond skeleton senses guide me to more diamonds. I had plenty in my inventory now, enough to craft a new diamond sword and a matching pickaxe, plus a full set of diamond armor. Since Otakuro was after my skull, I thought protecting it was my best option. And there is nothing more stylish than a diamond skeleton in full diamond armor. From day 63 to day 66, I spoke with the Illusioner about how I hadn't been able to find the Book of Secrets. Hmm, most troubling news. I think I shall have to accompany you. I may know where we can look. So, I followed his lead, and we ended up at the edge of an area I'd never seen before, the Nether Wastes. What the heck? I could have sworn this place wasn't here before. It has always been here, but not all have the means to see. These wastes are shrouded by a complex illusion. But you can lift it, right? I can, but it will take time. Casting illusions is my specialty. Removing them is much harder, especially when they have been cast by another. So we can't get there? I will attempt to break the illusion, and then we should be able to access the nether wastes. Well, okay. In the meantime, I guess I'll just wait. Patience, Zozo. I will need you at my side to defend me while I break the illusion. Nether waste may not be the only thing being hidden. From day 67 to day 70, the illusioner was hard at work lifting the illusion that was stopping us from getting to the nether waste. But something seemed to be bothering him while he was working. Zozo, I think there is something wrong. I sense a foul presence afoot in the mountains. One of Odakuro's undead but far more powerful than his zombies. You stay here, I'll go and take care of whatever it is. I made my way towards the mountains, and it didn't take long for me to come across what the problem was. It was the skeleton vanguard. After losing my last tangle with one of Sensei Otakuro's minions, I wasn't feeling confident I could best this creature, but perhaps there was a way I could reason with it. Old bones, old bones. Say, I know you're a little confused right now. I guess that must happen when you're brought back from the dead. But the one who brought you back, he just wants to use you. Believe me, he did it to me too. But us skeletons need to stick together. New bones, new bones. The skeleton vanguard lunged at me, disoriented. I had to hold back my punches and energy blasts. There was still a chance I could convince him to abandon Otakuro. If only I could get him to hold still. Wait, maybe he will respond to the gong. I struck it as hard as I could, and the skeleton vanguard was stunned, and it gave me a chance to talk to him. 
Listen, I don't want to hurt you. Otokura might have brought you back, but to him, you're just an undead soldier. I promise if you help me, we can take that monster down and set you free. Then your old bones can rest. Old bones, old bones. Slowly, the skeleton vanguard seemed to calm down. I had done it. He was now on our side. From day 71 to day 74, I was heading back to the base with the skeleton vanguard, only to see something terrible as I approached. The mutant enderman had found my hideout and was ransacking it. I hadn't even been able to finish the defensive bunker, and now Otokaro's star student of slaughter was destroying huge portions of my home. I tried to use my gong of weakening to stop him, but instead, he attacked me and stole it. Thanks for the gong, loser. I retreated and hid in a part of the base that was still intact. And before long, the mutant Enderman seemed to get bored and leave. I was feeling awful, worried that I'd never be able to beat the mean mutant Enderman. If I couldn't stop one of his weaker students, then I had no chance of stopping Sensei Otokuro. Zozo, buddy, you still in there? You can come out now. Gary told me that he and the skeleton vanguard had been busy rebuilding the base while I'd been feeling sad. They had made an effort to refortify the place against any future attacks. And they'd done it to try and cheer me up. I had to admit, it made me feel a little better. A little did I know, Sensei Otokuro was almost finished working on his undead army. I have almost amassed my forces once more. And once my prized pupil discovers the location of the Diamond Skeleton's hideout, soon we will march. My zombies and I will subjugate the overworld! From day 75 to day 78, the Illusioner returned to the base. He approached me to talk about how clearing the illusion had gone. Whoever cast that illusion over the nether waste was certainly remarkably powerful. You think it could have been Otakuro? No, he only seeks the power to destroy, not to conceal. Perhaps the original architect of the Destroyer was responsible. He might have cast the illusion to keep his book of secrets hidden. Were you able to clear it? Mostly, but you should be able to reach the nether waste and find the book. First things first though, I want my gong of weakening back. I set off to hunt down the mutant enderman. I wasn't going to let him get away with my stuff. And if I could take him down, then I could prove to myself that I was strong enough to stop Otokuro too. From day 79 to day 84, I spotted the mutant enderman in the Mojave Desert and he immediately launched an energy blast. With his back to me, he didn't see it coming and couldn't teleport out of the way. Caught off guard, I landed a hit, but it only angered him. You won't make me look weak in front of my sensei! He leapt at me and we fought. Without my gong of weakening, it was hard to gain an advantage over the enderman. Just when I thought I was about to land a strike with my sword or a powerful diamond punch, he'd zip out of the way and I'd miss. Suddenly, he threw blocks back at me and knocked me far back with a powerful attack. Then, a sudden surge of power overtook me. I got way bigger than before and even had a hundred hearts. Catching both myself and the mutant enderman by surprise, I suddenly fired a new special laser attack. The beam struck him right in the center and he couldn't get out of the way quick enough. With a few more hits to finish him off, Sensei Otokuro's right-hand Enderman was defeated! I grabbed my Gong of Weakening, glad to finally have it back, and the mutant Enderman had also dropped something, a special key! Ah, better hang on to this, it might come in handy later! From day 85 to day 89, I made my triumphant way back to base. To my surprise, Gary had gone out of his way to finish up working on the defensive bunker. Thought we could get the last of it done, now we'll be safe if there's any more trouble. Well, the mutant enderman won't be coming back here anytime soon. That's great news, Zozo. Now that I had my gong of weakening back, I decided to also head back to the nether waste. Sure enough, the illusion blocking the area was now gone, and I searched for the Book of Secrets. Sure enough, there it was, waiting for me at an altar. And so were a horde of mutant creepers. Using my weapons, I was able to defeat the diabolical monsters, and then I was free to grab the Book of Secrets. Now I had the last thing I needed to complete the Destroyer and put a stop to Sensei Otokuro's schemes. From day 90 to day 94, using the Book of Secrets, I started making the reinforced handles and the warped fungus which gives the Iron Destroyer that extra power. When holding it in hand, I felt its power flowing through me. At long last, I'm strong enough to take on my old sensei and right the wrongs I helped him create. But on my way out of the nether waste, I saw my oldest enemy standing right in front of me. It was my former sensei, Otokuro. Hello there, former student. It's been too long since we've seen one another, skull to skull. That's because your other students have been trying to take my skull. 
You shouldn't take such a thing personally, Zozo. There are bumps on the road for every journey of training. They're there to test our strength. I've seen the way you fight, how you've bested all my other students. You have impressed me, Zozo. Why not resume your teaching with me? You can reach levels of strength you've never even imagined. I'll never be your student, ever again. And I don't need anything you could teach me. I'm powerful enough to beat you already. I wouldn't be so sure. Before I could move, Otokura fired a plasma blast at me, and that blast paralyzed me. I was frozen in place, and while I was unable to move, Otokura approached and stole the destroyer from me. Foolish decision, Zozo. I'll let you live this time, just so you can languish in your shame. But next time I see you, rest assured, I will destroy you completely. And with that, he ran back into the depths of the nether. From day 95 to day 97, I was at first alone in the nether waste. I had to summon up all my willpower to overcome the paralyzing spell. As soon as I had, I left the nether waste for the mountains. I needed to team up with the illusioner and his elementals as quickly as I could. However, when I arrived, the fortress was in ruins and the elementals were all gone. Without the destroyer out there, Otokuro felt comfortable unleashing his full power. There was no one who could stop him. The only survivor was the Illusioner, and even he was on the edge of his demise. Zozo, it's too late for me. Don't waste your time. Get the Destroyer back, and finally surpass your old sensei for the good of the overworld. The Illusioner was gone. Feeling terrible, I set off towards my base. On day 98, I arrived back at my base, only to find it decimated, just like the fortress in the mountains. Only Gary the Gold Pig was still alive. Zozo, that monster! He came here and destroyed everything. He even destroyed the skeleton vanguard. And maybe a thief, but that bony buddy stole my heart. We can't let him get away with this. We can't stop him, Gary. He has the Destroyer, and the Destroyer is the only weapon that can destroy him. Hence the name! Zozo, take it from the expert. You can get it back from him. You just need to go to his dojo and steal it. Wow, you're right, Gary. All these different people I've learned from all this time, and I didn't even think to learn from you. On day 99, I arrived at my old sensei's dojo, but I couldn't exactly walk in. If I was going to steal that destroyer, I needed to use the element of surprise. I quietly searched around the dojo until on the second floor, I found a pedestal with a keyhole in the middle. Wait, my special key. This must be what it unlocks. I turned the key, and in the middle of the dojo, a secret floor dropped down into the basement but it was locked. I snuck in. Otokuro had no idea I was in there. Now I just need to get the destroyer back. I turned and saw Otokuro standing right there, but with his back turned to me. This was my chance. I snuck up behind him, and using techniques I'd learned from Gary, I stole back the destroyer. Otokuro turned to me with shock. Zozo, what have you done? I've leveled the playing field, sensei. On day 100, I was facing off against the Sensei, ready for the final battle. You were always such a disappointment to Zozo. Your skills showed such great promise, but you could never follow orders. How can you expect to learn from me now? There's nothing I want to learn from you. I'm no longer the student, Otakuro. Now, I'm the master. I knew that the longer I fought him, the more chance he'd have to turn the tables. He shot his plasma blasts, but they no longer had the same effect as before. I knew I needed to end this quickly, once and for all. I summoned all my power into one final strike with the destroyer. I ran towards him, putting every ounce of my power into the strike. Boom! Otokuro exploded into bones. The evil had finally been defeated, and the student truly had become the master. On day one, I spawned in as a baby Navi from the movie Avatar. I was surrounded by a bunch of other Navi, but I was the only baby. Why am I a baby? Are you my parents? Just then, Colonel Quaritch showed up with a bunch of soldiers. Consider this a warning. In 100 days, I'm going to attack and destroy the Tree of Souls. Without the Tree of Souls, all the Navi will disappear. <laughs> Everyone around me was angry, and they attacked. It was no use, though. We were no match against the colonel and his men. Quick, Zozo, take this. My parents threw me a ceremonial bow and some arrows and told me to hurry and hide deeper in the cave. No, wait! 
My parents joined the fight, but they too were quickly defeated. I had no choice but to run away and hide in the cave. I have 100 days to stop the army from destroying the tree, but how can a baby like me stop an entire army? On day two, I ran deeper into the cave. I had to be careful because I only had four hearts. Just then, I heard footsteps behind me. Someone was coming. I hurried and hid. A few military guys came running up and stopped in the tunnel. Did you see where that little baby Navi went? Colonel is going to make us do 200 push-ups if we don't find him. You mean that baby? Uh-oh, they saw me. I hurried and pulled out my bow, trying to hold them off. It's not working. I can't die already. Suddenly, something came running up to me. It was a hexapede. On my back. Hurry. What's your name, little guy? It's Sozo. What about you? Nikayu. Pleased to meet you. On day three, Nikaryu and I had reached an area deep in the woods. The space was filled with all kinds of creatures. Wow, I was wondering where you guys went to hide from the soldiers. Nikaryu then brought me to the wise old leader of the Hexapedes. And what brings such a small Navi to a place such as this? I told him about the soldiers and how they had ambushed my colony. I also told him that I had less than 100 days to save the Tree of Souls. If they destroy the Tree of Souls, all life on our planet will disappear. We must protect the tree at all costs. You aren't planning on taking the whole army down alone, are you? They took out my whole tribe, so it's just me. You're going to need all the help you can get. I'm too old to fight, but please take these supplies to aid you on your journey. Thank you. I don't know how I'm going to stop them yet, but I will do everything I can. We believe in you, but be careful. Colonel Quaritch will not hesitate to destroy anyone who stands in his way. I nodded and prepared to leave. Before I could get too far, Nikaryu stopped me. This battle affects us all. I'm strong and can help you in the fight. I would love to have your help. Let's do this. On days four to five, I decided it was time to start preparing myself for the fight. I went around punching trees and got enough tools to make myself a crafting table. With the crafting table completed, I then made myself a wooden pick. Let's get stony. Using my wooden pick, I mined a bunch of cobblestone, then used the cobblestone to craft a full set of stone tools. After I finished crafting, I realized it was starting to get late. I better start building my base. I can't risk getting attacked at night. I quickly got to work, building myself a base. I had found a giant tree and decided to build a base inside of it. I built rooms for both Nikaryu and me to live in. It's just a simple base, but it should keep us safe for now. By the time I finished building, it had gotten late. That's when some spiders attacked out of nowhere. Oh no, I spoke too soon. I swung my sword furiously and was able to take them all out. Just then, I felt a burst of energy and gained 10 hearts. Oh yeah, I'm even stronger. Before I went to bed, I decided to set up some torches. No more random mob attacks for me. On days six to eight, I woke up and decided to check the village from earlier for survivors. As I looked around, I saw that the soldiers had totally trashed the place. Then I saw a girl running from a soldier. Hey, why don't you pick on someone your own size? The soldier heard me yelling and stopped running after the girl. Then he turned and ran toward me. I had gotten stronger, so I wasn't afraid. I used all of my weapons and abilities, but he was still really strong. It was an intense battle, and we ended up on a balcony. I swung as hard as I could and knocked him over the edge. As the soldier disappeared, I saw he dropped something. The girl he was chasing ran over and picked it up. Find anything good? It looks like a map to a prison. Thanks for taking that guy out, by the way. What's your name? My name's Zozo. What about you? Neytiri. Nice to meet you. What were you doing out here anyway? When these soldiers attacked the village, I escaped during the fighting. I came back to try and find my parents. It looks pretty empty here, but maybe the prison on that map is where they're being held. I'll try anything. Let's go. On days 9 to 10, Neytiri and I made our way toward the prison. We carefully followed the map and soon saw a small prison in the distance. That must be it, but it looks like there's no guards. Let's get closer and find out. Just then, a grenade was tossed in front of us, blinding us. When we came to, a tough-looking soldier jumped out and attacked. They must have seen us coming. I tried my best to fight him off, but he was too strong. This was a fight I wasn't going to win. Neytiri and I had no choice but to jump down the tree and run away. Once we had gotten far enough away, we paused to talk. It looks like we're not strong enough. This all feels so helpless. Don't worry, we can figure it out. In the meantime, you can stay at my base. On days 11 to 12, Neytiri and I arrived back at the base. I hurried and built her a room to stay in. Thanks for looking out for me, Zozo. No problem. I wanted to ask you though, what do you know about the Colonel and these humans? I doubt I know much more than you, but when our village was under attack, I did overhear the Colonel saying he will rule over our planet once we're all wiped out. We can't let that happen. I was feeling angry about the Colonel, so I decided to look for more materials. 
I soon found some iron and coal. Back at the base, I loaded up some furnaces and started smelting. Then I crafted some iron tools, along with some iron boots and leggings. Nekaryu then came over to me and let me know he was feeling a little hungry, so I went out to try and find some food. After some walking, I found some carrots. Ah, oh, yes, I love these! I returned back to the base and dropped off the carrots to Nekaryu, then headed outside to start a carrot farm. Now we'll never run out of food! On days 13 to 15, I wanted to get stronger, so I asked Neytiri if she could help. The strongest warriors would train by hunting manticore, but only the adults. True warriors never harm the babies. Okay, I'll give it a try. I left the base and soon found myself in a tundra. The manticore should be close by. That's when I noticed some manticore feathers on the ground. Aha! I must be getting close. Yes. I looked a little further when I saw two manticores up ahead. Wow. A baby and its mom. I started to sneak toward the adult when suddenly a couple military guys jumped out and took out the baby. Those cowards! They then tried to fight the mom, who quickly took out one of the soldiers. It wasn't enough though, and the other soldier took her down. I rushed in. What do you think you're doing? The colonel has given us orders to destroy all the animals. We can't have you Navi trying to get stronger now, can we? That's assuming I'm not strong enough already. I charged at the soldier, angry at their disrespect. The soldier thought he was a tough guy, but in a few moments, I showed him up and took him out. As he disappeared, I saw he had dropped a manticore heart. I picked it up and took it with me back to the base. Back home, I went over to Neytiri and told her what happened. Then I showed her the manticore heart. That is what our warriors are after when they fight the manticores. Eat it. Eat it? If you say so. I scarfed down the manticore heart, and to my surprise, I gained six more hearts. Now that's some powerful stuff. On days 16 to 19, I headed out to do some more exploring. As I wandered, I soon found an ogre village. As I watched the ogres living peacefully in their home, I suddenly remembered my own life, a time where I lived peacefully with my own parents. Those evil humans want to break up all these wonderful families. I won't let that happen. Speaking of which, a group of soldiers had just shown up and they were attacking the village. The ogres all ran into their homes afraid. It was up to me to help them. Not today, humans! I charged in, using all the weapons I had at my disposal. These soldiers were tough, but with my training and upgrades, I was getting tough too. After a bit, I had won. A dad and his baby ogre came out of their house. He thanked me for defending the village, then offered me a jar to say thank you. Is this a jar of farts? I'll uh, find a good way to put this to good use. Thanks. On days 20 to 22, I started heading back to my base. I was thinking about the jar of farts when I was attacked by a crimson mosquito. How do you like this? I unleashed the jar of farts, which took him out with ease. Well, that didn't stink. Later, I saw some iron ore, which I mined up. Back at the base, I smelted the ore into ingots, then crafted them into a chestplate and sword. With my new equipment, I returned to the prison. Maybe I'd have better luck this time. As I arrived back at the prison, I saw another stun grenade pop out. It was the guard. He fired his weapon at me, but I was able to sneak up behind him and knock him out of the tree. This guy was tough and managed to hit me with a poison dagger, which really hurt. Even though he had grenades and weapons, I was able to get him down to half a heart. Before I could finish him off though, he started to laugh. What's so funny? <laughs> Whoever you're looking for here is already dead. I suddenly saw a vision of Neytiri's parents being interrogated in the prison. They refused to tell the colonel anything about the Tree of Souls. Then you will die. Goodbye. Back in the present, the soldier tried to attack me again. He was weak though, and I finished him off. Inside the prison, I saw it was empty, apart from a necklace memento. I'll have to take this to Neytiri. Maybe it can help. On days 23 to 26, I arrived back at the base with some bad news for Neytiri. I soon found her. Hey Neytiri, I managed to get into the prison, but I'm afraid it's not what we were hoping for. My parents are gone, aren't they? I'm afraid so. I thought that might be the case, but was hoping maybe I'd be wrong. If it helps, I did find this. I gave her the memento. I could tell it really helped her feel better. Thank you, Zozo. But hey, I have something to show you. Neytiri brought me outside and showed me that she had collected some chickens. This was perfect, as I was starting to run low on feathers for arrows. I got right to work, building them a chicken coop, then bringing them into it. I then went out to get more supplies. I found more iron, as well as some diamonds. I made an iron helmet to complete my armor set, then crafted a diamond pickaxe. To finish it all off, I got to work improving the base. I wanted to make it a little nicer for everyone. When I finished, I realized it was missing something. Hmm, I think it just needs to be a little bit more... avatar -y. On days 27 to 31, I headed out to find the materials I needed. On the way, I ran into a couple chocobos. Hey, are you guys okay? We're looking for our favorite food. 
Nightshade berries. The soldiers kicked us out of our land, so we don't know where to find it. Hmm, I don't know where to look, but I'll keep an eye out. I invited them back to my base in the meantime, to which they happily agreed. I soon came across the soul lights I was looking for and started mining. Suddenly, a flock of pateras started to attack me. Hey, I'm not bothering you. Leave me alone. I managed to fend the pateras off, and then I finished mining up the soul lights. Back at the base, I used the soul lights to finish the decorations. It was looking really great. I then built the Chocobos their own rooms to stay in. They were really happy about that. Then Nakaryu came running up to me. The soldiers are attacking my herd. Come quickly. I jumped on his back and we rode off to help. On days 32 to 35, we hurried back to the herd. As we arrived, I could see the place was filled with soldiers. We've got to help them. I rushed in, knocking out as many soldiers as I could. The hex beads had really hurt them, so I was able to finish several of them off. That's when I saw a soldier fighting the elder. Hey, get away from him! The soldier hit the elder, a hit he surely couldn't survive. No! I rushed in and took out all of the remaining soldiers. I approached the elder, but it was too late. Zozo, stay strong and keep fighting, and please keep looking after my son. And before I could respond, he died. Nikaryu, I'm sorry, I didn't know he was your dad. All I could think about was the moment my parents died. My heart hurt for Nikaryu. It's okay, Zozo. Looks like we're both orphans now. We still have each other. You can stick with me for as long as you want. On days 36 to 39, I decided to spend some time out alone. It had been a rough few days. That's when I heard someone call out to me. Hey, you! Wait! What's going on? My house has been taken over by a boar! Everyone is too scared to help me! Okay, sure. I'll help. Tell me where to go. I headed off in the direction the goblin had pointed me. I soon saw the cave he described, and when I went inside, the boar attacked me. Hey, don't be so mean. The boar was tough, but I finally managed to beat them back. I was about to deliver the final blow when a voice cried out. Wait, please don't hurt my mom. I turned and saw a baby boar. I asked them why they were in someone else's house, but before they could answer, the goblin from earlier showed up. What are you waiting for? Take them out. Wait, something isn't right about this. Just then, the goblin went to attack the boar. But before he could do any real damage, I stepped in and took him out. Thank you. That goblin was trying to kick us out of our home. Wait, that's what he said you did to him. He was lying so you'd come after us. That's when I noticed he had dropped a note. It was from the colonel. It read, destroy as many animals as you can and you will be rewarded greatly. He's trying to turn everyone against each other. We've got to hurry and stop him. On days 40 to 43, I arrived back at the base. I felt bad for everyone who had lost a friend or family, so I decided to improve the base. I went around and made each room a little nicer. Now that's looking great. I'm really worried about the herd. My father had really given them a home. Then tell them all to come live here. Nikaryu went to tell the other animals, and I got ready, preparing a place for them to stay. We were all going to be one big happy group, and I couldn't wait for everyone to arrive. Just as I finished up, the Chocobos from earlier came over to chat. They told me they were now big fans of carrots, but unfortunately, they were going to need their favorite food. Otherwise, they couldn't survive. Okay, don't worry guys, I'll find it. They explained what it was and where I could find it, then I hurried off. On days 44 to 49, I arrived in the location that the Chocobos had told me about. As I was exploring, I nearly ran into the Colonel. Aha! I knew I would find you here. What do you want? You! You keep attacking my men and saving all the animals. Stop getting in my way. I'll never stop. Not until you're defeated. Good luck with that. The colonel waved his arm and a super soldier dropped from a Samson aircraft in front of me. The colonel chuckled and left us to fight. This was going to be my hardest fight yet. The super soldier was strong, bigger than normal humans, and had attacks I had never seen before. He shot rockets from a tube he was carrying on his shoulder. What lab did this guy crawl out of? I did my best to hit him with my bow, but it didn't seem to do much damage. The arrows weren't working. Looks like it might be time to try something new. On days 50 to 53, I kept fighting against the super soldier. It was time to stop fighting from afar and get up close and personal. Take this! I charged in and started swinging my sword. With me being this close, his rockets were completely useless. Now that he wasn't hitting me as hard, it was only a matter of time. At long last, I delivered the final blow. Looks like I'll be the one fighting another day. As I looked around, I saw the colonel had been watching the battle. Ugh, I'll be back for you, Zozo. Mark my words. I charged at the colonel, but before I could get a hit in, he threw a stun grenade right in front of my feet. When the smoke cleared, the colonel was gone. I'm the strongest I've ever been, but it's still not enough. I have to get stronger. 
On days 54 to 57, I remembered I was supposed to be finding the Chocobo's food. At long last, I saw what I was looking for. As I got closer though, I was suddenly attacked by two hammerhead titanothers. Oh man, I must be on their turf. The two hammerheads were incredibly strong, working together to hit me with their attacks. It wasn't enough though, and I managed to take one out. Uh-oh, looks like the other one is really mad now. The remaining hammerhead charged at me, no longer trying to be strategic. It wasn't much longer, and I had taken them out as well. As it disappeared, I noticed it had dropped poisonous skin. I bet I could use this to make poison arrows. Oh, this will really help me out. I then collected the nightshade berries and headed back to my base. Back at the base, I met up with the Chocobos and gave them the nightshade berries. They jumped for joy and told me that they could now access their special power. Special power? You should have mentioned this before. The Chocobos explained that they can tap into the planet's life force and communicate with those who have passed on, but only for short amounts of time. So, my parents. The Chocobos nodded and then put their head down. There was a glow and suddenly I could see my parents in front of me. Dad? Mom? It's us, Zozo. We're so proud of you and what you're doing. Keep fighting. We know you can defeat the Colonel. There was another bright light, and they disappeared. Thank you for doing that for me. Now let's win this fight. On days 58 to 62, I got to work planting some of the nightshade berries so the Chocobos would have a constant supply. As I finished, Neytiri came up to me. Thanks for getting these planted. I've been enjoying taking care of the other plants, so I'll make sure these are good as well. I thanked her, then left to try and go find some more diamonds. As I went deeper and deeper into the mines, I soon found a whole bunch of diamonds. Before I could start mining though, I was attacked out of nowhere. What are you doing down here, you creep? I then mined up all the diamonds and went back to my base. With my diamonds, I made myself a couple of pieces of armor. Then I headed out to the farm and made some improvements, so Nateri could feel happy while she worked on the farm. On day 63 to 66, one of the Chocobos came running over to me. They told me they had spoken to a great warrior who had died long ago. This warrior told him about a powerful weapon that could defeat the Colonel. That could be the very thing we need to win. The Chocobos told me that it was in a different biome and told me where to go. I set off right away, and I soon reached the vortex. As I searched, I soon saw a temple, and I noticed there was a Leonopteryx flying around overhead. As long as he doesn't bug me, I won't bug him. I approached the temple and headed inside. This had to be where the weapon was kept. Suddenly, a Thanator jumped out. I took my sword, ready to fight. Then the Thanator spoke. Wait, wait, don't attack. Huh? I thought you were going to attack me. Of course not, I'm super nice. This temple is my home, but some other not so nice mobs have kicked me out. Oh man, well I'm looking for some kind of ancient weapon here. Do you know anything about it? It's possible, the temple is filled with all kinds of old relics. Clear the place and you can take whatever you want. Deal. On days 67 to 70, I followed the Thanator deeper into the temple. As we walked, I noticed several pieces of art and books that looked like they were wow. centuries old. Eventually, we stopped outside a room, and he turned to me. They're in there. Viper wolves. And lots of them. I'll take care of it. You hang tight. I ran into the next room, and sure enough, there were a bunch of viper wolves. They immediately attacked, and I did my best to fight them off. My ticket to beating the colonel could be hiding here. I had to win. Time to say goodbye. I kept swinging, and at long last, the viper wolves were all defeated. I heard a noise in the corner and saw there were some smaller thanators hiding nearby. Thank you, Zozo. This is my family. They all thanked me, and I took off to look for the weapon the ancient warrior had mentioned. I looked and looked in every nook and cranny, but there was nothing. Shoot, the weapon must not be here anymore. I met back up with the Thanator and invited him and his family to live at my base, but he said they were happy here. I thanked him for letting me look and then left to go back to my base. On day 71 to 74, I left the temple as the Leonopteryx circled in the sky above. I paused for a moment. Did you know this isn't my first adventure? You can watch more of my videos after this one is over. Just search for Zozo. Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. I was getting closer to my base when I came across a group of soldiers. More of these guys, huh? Not for long. I charged in and started taking them out. The less pesky soldiers there were, the safer the land would be. Soon, I had taken them all out. That's when I noticed one of them had dropped a note. It said, To all soldiers, there is a Navi named Zozo who needs to be defeated immediately. I, Colonel Quaritch, am working on a special weapon to destroy the Tree of Souls. It will be done at the end of the 100 days, but this Zozo needs to be dealt with immediately. All soldiers will be on double shifts until he is destroyed. It looks like I'm making a dent. What is this weapon he's working on? I have to find a powerful weapon of my own, and fast. 
On days 75 to 78, I arrived back at my base and went to talk to the Chocobos. I went to the temple and searched everywhere, but I didn't see it anywhere. The Chocobo was really confused, as the spirits they talked to are rarely wrong. But unfortunately, they didn't have any other ideas. They promised to try and figure it out. I decided that in the meantime, I would improve the base. It was starting to look really good now. I could tell everyone was really happy, and I hoped it could always be like that. When I had finished making my upgrades, Neytiri came over to talk to me. Zozo, I have some great news. Huh? What is it? I have been experimenting with the plants and developed a superfood. Wow. I want you to be the first to try it. I picked it up and ate it down. It was delicious. Suddenly, I felt energy flow through me, and I grew even bigger with even more hearts. Whoa, this is awesome. On day 79 to 84, I decided to test out my strength. I soon arrived in a new place and spotted the perfect test subjects. How do you like me now? I jumped in and managed to take them out in just a few hits. Now that's what I call power. Just then, I spotted someone watching me from afar. It was another Navi. He came over to me. You're pretty strong. Thanks. I can take on anyone. You could be stronger though. Oh, what makes you think so? Well, I'm stronger than you. Check it out. The Navi hit me and he was right. He was strong. Ouch. Okay, you didn't have to hit me. I believed you. What's your secret? Come, I'll show you. The Navi then put me through a training program. He had a lot of good advice and I was able to learn so many new things in a short amount of time. Once we were done training, the warrior tossed me an upgraded bow. Thanks, I'm feeling even stronger already. By the way, how did you get so strong? It was my mission to ride a Leonopteryx, but I've never been successful. Now I don't even know where to find one. I didn't know you could ride those. I actually saw one not too long ago. I could show him to you. No, I'm much too old now, but I think you could do it. Yeah, I'll give it a try. Say, why don't you come live at my base with me? No thanks, the wilderness is where I belong. I thanked him for his help, then turned to go back to my base. On days 85 to 89, I returned to the base and saw it had been attacked. Buildings were broken and no one was around. Oh no, what happened? Where is everyone? I ran around the base looking to see if I could find anyone. I soon found Nikaryu. He was injured and hiding in one of the ruined buildings. What happened here? The soldiers, they came out of nowhere. They took Nateri. Oh no, I have to save her. Where did they go? Are you okay? Yes, I'll live. Quick, they only left an hour ago. They went that way. I hurried in the direction Nakaryu had mentioned, looking for any signs of the soldiers. Then I heard someone calling for help. Neytiri! I ran toward the sound, but saw it wasn't Neytiri. It was a dire horse who was clearly injured. Before I could say anything, it spoke. Are you looking for that girl? Yes, have you seen her? I tried to stop them, but they knocked me out of their way. They're moving quickly, faster than you can run. But there is another way. What's that? Nearby is a special plant. Blue orchids grow on top of that tree right over there. Harvest one of the leaves and rub it on my wound. Then I can carry you to them in no time. Okay, show me the way. He told me where to go and I ran off. I soon saw the tree. It was extremely tall and the leaves I needed were at the very top. Let's get jumping. I jumped from branch to branch, doing my best not to fall. At long last, I reached the top and grabbed the leaves I needed. Some time later, I was back by the dire horse. I applied the leaves and he immediately hopped up. Hop on, there's still time. On days 90 to 94, the dire horse and I could see the soldiers appear in the distance. There was no time to waste. As we got closer, I could see Neytiri. She was being guarded by a few guards as well as another super soldier. But this super soldier looked even stronger than the first one. I jumped off the dire horse and told him to get a safe distance away. I faced him. Let her go. Come to save your friend, huh? You'll never win. Get this Navi punk out of my sight. The normal soldiers charged at me, but I knocked them out with just a few hits. Huh, you're stronger than you look, but not stronger than me. The super soldier charged at me, unleashing a special attack. I didn't see it coming, and it did a lot of damage. This was going to be tough. You'll never take our land, our people. I took out my bow and landed a perfect shot, which seemed to disable his special attack. Now the fight was really on. Ah, you'll pay for that. On days 95 to 97, our battle raged on. He was madder than ever, now that he didn't have an advantage. Both of our hearts were dropping, and it was only a matter of time until one of us fell. Suddenly, he stepped back. One more hit, and I would win. You think beating me changes anything? I've done my job already. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> the colonel has already completed his weapon to destroy the Tree of Souls. We took the girl to take you out of the game. You're too late. No! I jumped toward him and destroyed him for good. 
Then I noticed he dropped something. Huh? With this, I can do his same special attack. Yes. I quickly freed Natiri. Hurry back to the base using the dire horse. I'm not strong enough to defeat the colonel yet, but I think I know what I need to do. Natiri nodded and ran off to find the dire horse and get back to the base. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm crazy enough to try. On day 98, I rushed back to the temple. The ancient warrior said this was the location of the weapon, but he never said it was inside of the temple. I looked up at the Leonopteryx. If I can tame it, I'll finally be able to be the ultimate warrior. The Leonopteryx kept flying around, ignoring me completely. I thought about it for a moment, then pulled out my bow. I aimed and fired. The arrow was a direct hit. The big bird let out a screech and headed right at me. Oh boy, I may have really stepped in it this time. The bird swooped down to hit me. I jumped to the side and tried to get on its back. I was close, but missed. Shoot, I've got to keep trying. The bird was interested in attacking me now, and I did my best to avoid it. Sometimes it hit me, but most of the time I was able to land on its back. Finally, after several attempts, it worked. Got you. The Leonopteryx was mad at first, flying around like crazy. But soon, it recognized it had lost, and soon, it was smooth sailing. We bonded through the flight, and soon landed back on the ground. I hopped off as the bird flew away, and suddenly, I felt the power flow through me, and I leveled up into my biggest, final form. At long last, I'm ready to take this colonel down. On day 99, I returned back to the village where it all began. The Tree of Souls was nearby. I passed through the tunnels I had run through nearly 100 days ago. I had grown so much since then. Suddenly, there was a flash of light, and I could see my parents standing before me. I was so close to the Tree of Souls, it made it possible for them to show themselves to me. Mom! Dad! Great job, Zozo. We've been watching your journey and are so proud of everything you've accomplished. Thank you. I just wish I could have saved you too. Don't worry about us, son. Everyone on the planet is counting on you, but we know you can stop the Colonel and save our way of life. I will do my best. We will be watching and supporting you. Do not lose hope. There was another flash of light, and they disappeared. I soon emerged from the tunnel into a large cavern. I could see the final tunnel to the Tree of Souls, but an army of super soldiers were blocking the path. Oh no, how could I possibly get past all of them? You won't be alone. I turned and saw Nikaryu, along with all of the friends I had made along the way. We will distract them. You go for the colonel. I don't deserve friends as great as you. We don't deserve a friend as great as you. I smiled and thanked them for being my new family. It was going to be a tough fight, but it was for our home. Everyone ready? Attack! My friends charged at the super soldiers, who were shocked to see that they were the ones being overpowered. As they fought, I saw a chance to run through the tunnel. I took it and headed in. Hopefully my friends could stay alive long enough for me to take the colonel down. On day 100, I entered another large cavern. In the center of it was the Tree of Souls. It was still standing, but the colonel was in a mech suit, shooting it with energy beams. Colonel, it's over. I'm here to stop you for good. You'll pay for the lives you've taken. Stop me. Can't you see you're too late? This weapon can't be stopped, especially by a weakling like you. You'll have to destroy me first. I've spent 100 days developing this weapon. That will be easy. The colonel then turned and fired his beam at me. It landed near me, causing an explosion. The explosion knocked me to the side, causing a lot of damage. I hurried and got out my bow, firing off arrows as fast as I could. I got some hits in, but it looked like it wasn't doing much damage. Arrows? Really? Do you see what you're up against? Give up now, and I'll let you stay alive as my pet. I'll never stop fighting! He shot off a beam again, this time hitting me. It nearly took all of my hearts. I ran and hid behind some rocks so that I could hurry and heal up. <laughs> see what I mean? You have no chance, cowering like a small child, because that's what you are. Just then, I saw a wood sprite land near me. Huh? A wood sprite? It's a pure seed from the Tree of Souls. I could tell it wanted something with me. Hmm. Accept me. I closed my eyes, and the wood sprite flew into me. I felt myself get stronger. Suddenly, more and more wood sprites started to appear and start flying into me. The power of generations began flowing through me. I grew even bigger and now had 100 hearts. I stepped out to face the colonel again. What? How? You failed to understand the world around you, and so now you'll fail to defeat me. The colonel yelled and started firing his energy beams at me. They still did some damage, but I barely felt a thing. I charged at him, sword in hand. I jumped into the air, slamming my sword down on top of him. His suit exploded, and he was destroyed. The world was safe once more. I celebrated with my friends. If anyone else tried to hurt us again, we would be ready.